小子。Happy Sunday. Hold on a second. Oh, no. Here we go. And a happy Sunday. 
to all of my Seminole family. I did a 24 hour duty last night. So that's why I didn't get on earlier like I usually do on Sundays with a T2Y. I had to get some sleep. But all that aside, you on 863 Seminole TV, and I'm your host, Polk, aka Low Money, aka The Got Damn Truth. And we're going to get with some news. But mo- we're going to start off with some news. But today, I want to talk about the season. FSU season is done. No more games. FSU will not um, attend a bowl. Uh, even if they were invited, they said they were not participating in the bowl season. The season's a wrap. We're going to review it. We're going to talk about it. We're going to d- discuss it. We're, I also want to break down college football playoff. Not really break it down, but at least go over my thoughts on it and how much of a joke I really think the college football playoff is and really has been since its ex- in, uh, inception. Um, and before we get into all that, we're going to do some th- some news broke today. Some good news broke today. And I'm not going to say it's bad news, but we did lose another player. But that's to the draft, not because of anything negative. So those two things did happen today. And before we get started with all of that, if you haven't noticed, check the subscriptions. We hit over 700, man. We are slowly but surely closing in on that 1,000 mark. So shout out to everybody that's uh, doing their part to make that happen. I appreciate you guys that's showing the support. We're at 703 last time I checked. We're climbing, bro. We're climbing. As Norvell would say, just keep climbing. And we're climbing not only in the program, but we're climbing on this channel to become to lead the way for FSU YouTube. This will be the channel when it's all said and done, when it comes to Florida State YouTube content. I'm determined to make that happen. So shout out to everybody who's helping support me and make that happen. Now, let's get to the news. Hamsa, Nas, he has decided to declare for the draft not really a surprise. I think we all kind of saw this one coming when he accepted the Senior Bowl invite. Um, so it's not really a surprise. Uh, you know, w- why risk another injury? Um, you could argue that he needed some more game film. You could argue that he needed to, you know, maybe raise his stock. You know, if he comes back next year, he could have played himself into the first round. And that's a valid argument. I think I think he looked at it as I don't know, you know, he may I don't know how confident he is in that knee. And I think he looked at it and said, let me cash out now. And if I and if I if I'm 100 percent, if I'm ready to go, I'll make that money back with a decent or big time contract uh, one day in the NFL. I think he just decided, you know, let me go get paid right now and not risk it. So there you go. Nas Hampson Nazaldine will be declaring for the NFL draft. And with that departure comes a new comer. Let me make sure I'm pronouncing his name right. Jaquez McLean. I believe that's how his last name's pronounced. Former Arkansas DB. Six foot, 188. With the uh, American Heritage, which is a damn good high school in Florida out of Delray. Uh, Has transferred over. Has transferred over to Florida State. He announced that today. Um, Pro Football Focus had him grading out routinely in the in the in the lower to mid seventies, which is a uh, that's pretty solid grade. Um, last year, not this past year, because he he opted out due to COVID things. He wasn't sure about COVID. Um, he decided to opt out. Didn't he? Did not participate. He will be. With not losing a year of eligibility, he will technically be, I think, what a red shirt junior next year. Um, but his last year of playing, 34 tackles, one interceptions. Uh, he had 21 solos, four pass breakups. Um, from what I gather on him, I have not watched any of his tape at Arkansas. I may, I may dive into that um, 
but from what I read up on him, his strength is uh, he's a tough physical corner. I mean, he's he's graded out as high as 80 percent um, in pro football focus for whatever that's worth, whether you go by with those guys or not. I so so on him, but he has graded out as high as 80 in the 80 percentile as a tackler goes. So plus there. And uh, I mean, look at what we have on the DB uh, depth chart right now. You lost to Sante Samuel. I don't know. I don't know if they ever know. Like, I no no idea what you ever, if ever, you're gonna get anything out of Amico Dodson, uh, Demory Tate. While we all expect big things from him, didn't qualify this year. I would fully expect him to qualify next year. Um, then you got then what you got Brownlee, Dent, and Jones, and then you bring in the two to three freshmen that you have. I think it's a solid addition. Um, adds a SEC caliber starting defensive back, adds some leadership, veteran player. To me, you can never go wrong with that. Um, and as you can see this year, I don't know if you can never, in my opinion, have enough DB. So I think it's a solid get. Uh, I don't know if he's going to set the world on fire, but if nothing else, he brings experience, he brings depth, and he brings a tough mentality to this defensive backfield. Um, before I continue, we've got 23 people in chat. Let's do our typical roll call and shout out everybody who decided to kick it with us tonight. Scroll up to the top. Maiden Dade, Dennis Wilson, Robert Laster, Island Boy, Giuseppe, Brandon B., No Blooded, Tyler, No Squad, Panama Jack, Jen Fari, Feli, Uh, Jose Garcia, Concrete, don't say Hamza, hit it to the draft. Yeah, he hit it to the draft, Panama. And I think that Derek Neal, Rodney Jackson, I think we hit on everybody who's commented in the chat so far. So there you go. Hit the like button if you haven't already. Destroy in the building. Gators almost pulled it off yesterday, man. Um, Lorenzo Toussaint, John Shields. All right, I feel you. Everybody's starting to make their presence known. Hey, let your presence known so we can get you in on this roll call. Now, that's really the only news I got. Um, Ronnie Jackson just put it out too, as well. So I'll, we'll talk about it. Uh, there's a wide receiver, I believe he's a wide receiver. Correct me if I'm wrong. Damn, I keep hitting this damn mic. My hand. There's a wide receiver. Um, I'm gonna see. Let me make sure we're talking about the same guy. I think we are, Rodney. But there's a wide receiver recently uh, hit the portal that FSU is supposed to be in on. Let me make sure me and you are talking about the same guy because I just saw it come over my Twitter feed not too long ago. Yeah, Andrew Parchment out of Kansas, six two out of Fort Lauderdale, one seventy five. Um, He's out of anytime. Anytime those Florida kids hit that portal, man. In my opinion, go go check them out. Go look at them. Go see what it's worth. So, yeah, Panama Jack. So yeah, look out for that one. That is also another potential guy uh, that we could be adding in the coming days. Uh, the the guy we got today kind of came out of nowhere. I didn't even know we were in on him. Um. And that's what I told you guys earlier. Like, this transfer portal is going to be ridiculous. There's a ton in there, and there's going to be a ton more to come. Guys are going to hit the portal that we do not even foresee hitting it. And uh, I just don't be in a rush or don't get too discouraged when a guy hits the portal and you think FSU should go after him and they don't. They may have knowledge of another guy that's going to enter or, you know, something like that. The portal is going to be pivotal. It's going to be pivotal. And right now we've got our starting quarterback out of the portal. And we just added a corner out of the portal portal. I don't think we're done by a long shot. So this is, you know, like May and Dade said, this is essentially, and if this is the free, is free agency right now. Guys are hitting the portal without any restrictions. Teams have their pick of the litter, pretty much. Teams are having their pick of the litter. And the kids have their pick of wherever they want to go. This is essentially what you're seeing 
is, I mean, the free agency thing is a good comparison, but you're you're seeing you're seeing a lot of these kids go through their second recruitment cycle. You're seeing a lot of these kids saying that maybe they made a mistake because it's not just seniors that are transforming. You're getting a lot of freshmen who have played one year and they're they're out. Uh, you know, guys are maybe looking at it saying, oh, I'm more informed of how the recruiting thing works now. I'm going to give this a second go around. Maybe I didn't quite pick the best fit for me. So it's going to be interesting to see this stuff going forward. No blooded in the building. And um, yeah, read a couple comments. Then we're going to read a couple comments. Then we're going to talk about we're going to cover the college football playoffs, a couple bowl games that I uh, I think the whole list of bowl games is out. I didn't want to go over all of that. I mainly want to talk about one through four, the New Year six, and the good old cheese it bowl. <laughs> the good old cheese it bowl. Um, Mike Haynes had a great class. Now we only need a couple quarters corners from the portal. Um, Florida did play Bama tight. Can't wait to renew the UF and FSU rivalry next year. Transfers granted immediate eligibility, so the portal will be crazy. Yeah, it's, it's gonna get it's gonna get insane up until the portal's gonna be big up until honestly up until probably fall. Up until probably fall of next year, you're gonna see guys continue continuing to transfer out. My only question is, does the portal does this transfer rule extend to the kids that are signing now? So these kids that just signed this past Wednesday, are they allowed to transfer without any consequence as well? I mean, this thing could really get crazy, guys. This kid, this thing could really get crazy. Imagine if it does. I'm not saying this is going to happen, but I'm going to use Miami as an example. Because a lot of people, including some Miami fans, believe that Miami benefited a lot from COVID, being able to keep some of these kids home. I've heard a lot of people talk on it. And a lot of people have really came out and said, look, some of these teams have benefited from COVID. Why? It is extremely difficult to recruit anybody to your school and they can't visit you. They can't get a face to face with you. They can't see physically what they're going to be in and around for the next four years of their life, three to four years. A lot of schools like Miami, um, some other schools too, not just Miami, but a lot of places feel like they, they benefited in this, in this recruitment process. I mean, look at the North Carolina, they kept a lot of North Carolina kids home. A lot of people feel like they benefited from kids really only being able to go you know, to their local university, essentially, not being able to go anywhere. And even being able to go to your local spot, you had to do it on your own dime, um, at your own expense. You really couldn't have contact with the staff if you did come. Like I know Destin Hill did that with Florida State. He came all the way from Louisiana and he visited FSU's campus, but he wasn't allowed to have contact with anybody. He just had to pretty much come look around on his own so it's hard to really recruit like that. And um, it's going to be interesting. My, me saying all that is saying this. My point is, now I think the dead period has extended to April. But if at any point, especially with this vaccine and stuff, if at any point that gets lifted and this transfer rule extends to the guys who have just signed, what's keeping some of these Miami kids or just kids in general from other places from maybe who maybe had an interest in going elsewhere, say, Ooh, I'm a, I'm gonna hit the transfer portal. I ain't even, I ain't even taken one snap in college football. I ain't even had a, a spring practice yet or hit fall camp yet, but this is my opportunity now to make sure I'm going to the right spot. It's, 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 it's not out of the realm of possibility. Like it's really not. I heard Norville's only going to go after the big fish. He doesn't want just bodies. It, it's, when it comes to the portal, that should be the case, uh, Brandon B. He shouldn't just be getting guys just to get guys in the portal. He can fill out the recruiting class with a bunch of Project 3 stars and have them sit behind, quote-unquote, big fish, or at least guys who are going to get some legitimate playing time. That should be, that should be, the, um, that should be the, 
the case or the plan. Pope Dickerson played well last night. Yeah, sucks for Dick Dickerson. You know, wish the best for him. Can never stay healthy here. Goes to Alabama and basically becomes the best offensive lineman in the country, apparently. Um, but I think it was, he was carted off the field last night. I foresee the portal rules ultimately becoming a much more relaxed like you see right now. Um, yep, this will change college football going forward, specifically with all the lies that these kids are being told on recruiting cycles. Um, I wish my nose were in a bowl game. Are they on scholarship when they transfer? Pretty sure they are. Yeah, when they transfer over, they take up a scholarship spot. Um, Mayan King, what's up? We don't need no bowl game. We need no go to focus on recruiting. Um, agreed. It definitely helped us. FSU will benefit from the portal this year with Florida kids from wanting to come back home. Jordan Hatton, I think on, I think they should have took a bowl game, if not just for the practices and possible victory, but because we need it for momentum going into the offseason. FSU will benefit from Florida kids wanting to come home. Definitely. And I saw a guy on Instagram say Toy Philly isn't going to be an elite back solely because he isn't a five star. Says we need a big hitter. Um, whoever that guy on Instagram is, if I was following on Instagram, I'd tell him he was an idiot. I I'd, I'd flat out say you're an idiot. You probably should not be allowed to ever talk football again with that with a take like that. That's a fairly dumb one. Um, Devontae Freeman wasn't a five star, went on to the NFL, become a Pro Bowl and, and a very high paid running back before injuries derailed his career. Devontae Reed Freeman was not a five star. Um, so yeah, you sound you sound really stupid when you say stuff like that. Uh <laughs> I mean, yeah. The guy, um, the guy that plays the running back from the Raiders who went to Alabama, he was a three star. I mean, I can I'm not even gonna get into that. Khalil Mack was a not doing it. Not doing it. Everybody knows that's a, the, the most – that's the dumbest take a person could have. Anyway, Todd Pope says, I hope we get better. Uh, Barnaby says, that's pretty stupid. Lawrence is the truth. Portal has to be huge for us. Those two UNC running back with three stars. Bro, we can we can literally go and just destroy that argument all day. Um, there's, no, there's, there's no point of even starting to get into that. Uh, not, not coming for you uh, – just Lance. I'm just saying, like, you should have destroyed that. You should have just, you should have destroyed them. Anyway, let's go over, let's go over the college football stuff real quick, and then we'll get into FSU season and review. So the college football playoff, the committee, who I haven't been, a, look, I, I'm one of the people that called for a college football playoff, but it needs to, and I think eventually we will get an eight, 18 playoff, um, and it needs to be that. I was never too big on the four team, and you you've to me you've seen throughout the history of the playoff how biased and how corrupt it is. If I'm just being honest, and I'm not even talking Notre Dame. I know Miami fans are hot at Notre Dame because Miami hates Notre Dame. I got it. Um, to me, I don't. I personally, and I may be in the minority. I think if you look at Notre Dame's resume. Who else can say they have they have a win over Clemson? I don't care if they have Trevor Lawrence or not. They were still Clemson at the time. If we're not going to use excuse, you know, we can't use excuses when other teams have injuries. I'm not going to use that as an excuse for Clemson because they didn't have Trevor Lawrence for that game. Notre Dame beat them. Period. It's not like a uh, 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 Clemson's backup is some scrub. Okay, so that win alone to me qualifies Notre Dame. My problem is honestly with Ohio State being three. My problem is with Ohio State even being in the playoff, period, and how they have bent the rules for Ohio State from the jump. Ohio State shouldn't have even qualified for their own conference championship game. I don't care how much talent they have. I, if that's the case, then why are we playing games? If we're just going to throw Ohio State in there because people say, oh, well, look at the talent. They got Justin Fields. They recruit a bunch of five stars. So they deserve. if that's the case, why are we playing college football games? Let's just start every college football off with just saying, okay, let's put the best recruiting teams with the best recruiting classes in the playoff and, and, and call it a wrap. Last time I checked, I thought you played games and earned your spot in the playoff. That's what I thought. Alabama has played, what, 10, 11 games? Same thing with Clemson. Same thing with Notre Dame. Ohio State's played six, but they deserve a spot. Are we serious? To hell with talent. Give it if, that, if there was if there was a year to test it, 
If there was a year to give a team like a Cincinnati a chance, this was the year. At the end of the day, speaking personally, I don't take this year serious anyway. I think whoever wins this national championship gets an asterisk by it anyway. It, sh it really shouldn't count, in my opinion. The Heisman this year should have an asterisk by it. It really shouldn't count, in my opinion. So why not this year of all years, why not test the waters? Why not put a, a Cincinnati in there or one of these other schools? You know, um, I I would take Texas A&M over Ohio State. I, and I, I know Texas A&M got blew out by Alabama, but I know they also beat Florida. Um, but to me, Texas A&M has a better resume than Ohio State. Hell, to me, Georgia has a better resume than Ohio State. And I can go, I could go, up, go, up, go down a list of, um, hell, North Carolina, who just scored again. They have a better resume than Ohio State. I'm really against the Ohio State thing. And I may be in the minority of that because every, everything that I have heard has been everybody so mad at the Notre Dame thing. Notre Dame has a legit top two win. Not what other team in the country can say they beat the first or second team. No, there's no other team in the country that can say what Notre Dame's accomplished. Yes, I get it. They got beat bad in the ACC championship game. Okay, got it. No, there's not one team in the country that has a win over a top two team on their resume other than Notre Dame. Well, I guess Clemson because Notre Dame was number two when Clemson beat them. Okay, so other than Notre Dame and Clemson. So those two belong in the playoff in my opinion. But let's go to the comments and see what you guys think. <clears throat> Tyler says he's. I saw you on that tour, Philly highlight. Yeah, I like the. I like that highlight video, so I had to comment on it. And then James always comes in here and says ridiculous things. Um, Bobby, what's going on? Yeah, he is. But James has been doing that for a while. He comes in here and he just says the most random shit to, to get me to react. I, now that I know his game, I don't even pay attention to what James says half of the time. Um. The playoff is a farce, basically a money grab. Absolutely. All about the money. That was so – it was too predictable. It's no way Notre Dame and Ohio State made it. It's not a playoff. It's college football invitational. That is absolutely, Ardavius. I absolutely agree with that. Um, it's crazy how OSU got in. Great team, but this year they didn't deserve it. As much as I dislike Jimbo, Tate, Tam, you deserved it. Yeah, Ohio State should not be there. Ohio State and Notre Dame should not be in the playoff. <laughs> Playoff needs to be eight teams at least. Yeah, I, to Tyler, you know, to your point, and a lot of people who think it's eight should be eight teams. That's where I'm at. I think you get the every single conference champion, Power Five team that wins their conference is a guaranteed bid. Those are your five guaranteed bids, right? Your five guaranteed bids. Then, uh, two at large Power Five schools, only two. Only two at-large power fives. So, for instance, this year, Notre Dame or Texas A&M or whoever, but two at-large power fives and then one guaranteed group of five school, which would have been a Cincinnati. And even that's being a little bit unfair to the group of five, but at least at least they'll get some type of representation right now. Because right now, the UCFs, the Cincinnati's, the Memphises before that, the Boise's. I mean, everybody's thinking that this thing started just recently with UCF and Memphis. Boise had been knocking on the door of the BCS for years. And every time Boise went to a bowl game, they were beating the Oregons and the Oklahomas of the world. Boise had been knocking on the BCS door until it switched to the playoff. It was the BCS. Boise had been knocking on that door for years, going undefeated, beating everybody. And then everybody says, well, when they play the big boys, they won't win. And when they would play the big boys, they would win. And Boise still never got that respect. So, look, man, this thing isn't just something new. It's been happening for a while. Boise in the past deserved a shot now. So you at least got to get, you know, again, it's still doing a little bit of a disservice to the group of five, but at least they can get one team in there to, 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 to make a case for them. That's, that's just me. That's what I think. Uh, it should be 18 minimum. Funny how people nationally were so pissed off at FSU missing games because of COVID. 
Ohio State played six games and everyone didn't say a word. Everyone didn't say a word, and they were all, again, they were gifted. The Big Ten had its own rule that you had to play a minimum of six games to qualify for the conference championship. And then when, when, when they realized Ohio State wasn't going to be able to meet that criteria, they changed the rule on the fly and the gift wrapped at Ohio State a chance in the, in, in, in the conference championship. Nobody has said a word about it. Nobody's up in arms about it. It's ridiculous, man. Ohio State has two ranked wins against Indiana and Northwestern. Definitely powerhouse teams. Definitely big time teams there. Again, if that's the case, Notre Dame, again, I do not have a problem with Notre Dame. Notre Dame has a win against North Carolina ranked team. Oh, and they just scored again. And they have a win against, at the time, what was Clemson? Number one and number two team in the country. So what are we talking about? Clemson will destroy Ohio State. I can somewhat understand Notre Dame trying to take make a case, but Ohio State has no business. That's how I feel. I, I, I To me, Notre Dame has a case. Ohio State has none. Saban finna be the breaks off of them overrated midget dwellers. It's so political and playoffs are a joke. A&M deserved it. Clemson, Alabama, Clemson, Notre Dame, and A&M. Ohio State just has a huge fan base. That's how they got in. Exactly. Texas A&M should have gotten in. Bama, Clemson, Notre Dame, and A&M. Money. Hold on. Chat jumped on me, guys. Uh, Ohio State just has a huge – oh, I read that one. But money. People. Here we go. People need to understand that the Big Ten commissioner put a halt to their season. Those boys were ready to play. But that's their own fault, Rick. That that's their own fault. See, the, the Big Ten and the Pac-12 did it. What they should have did, obviously, was do what the SEC and the ACC and the Big 12 did, and that's play football. They were trying to be, they were trying to pretend like they cared, and and and, and not play football when they. And then they realized, oh, we 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 dropped the ball here. They screwed themselves. Just that doesn't mean you give them a pass and put them in the playoff because they screwed themselves. I'm sorry. There's teams that deserved it more. There's teams that play damn near a full schedule of football this year. If you burn a house down, if you if you cause the fire, but put it out, are you really? Did you really do anything good? You get what I'm saying? If you if you if you about to burn your own house down, but then you end up putting out the fire, did you really deserve the praise for putting out the fire that you caused in the first place? That's how I look at it. That's just me. I'm not saying the kids didn't want to play. It's unfortunate. I know the kids wanted to play. But guess what? They don't deserve it, period. They don't deserve it. <laughs> there you go. Small victories, but nonetheless. Right. That's how I feel, Brandon. Like... Your commissioner stopped games, then your commissioner did your teams and your conference of disservice. That shouldn't affect the teams and the uh, other conferences that actually played 10, 11, 12 games. That's your fault. Deal with that in, you know, deal with that in-house or however you got to deal with that. Don't penalize other teams that have better resumes. I'm sorry, you can't get beat by 24 in the conference championship and still compete for the national championship. Well, if that's the case, A&M doesn't deserve to be in there because A&M got destroyed by Alabama in, by more than 24. So for the guys that, you know, and this is just me, but for the guys who want to say Notre Dame doesn't deserve it because they got waxed in the conference championship, A&M has no business in there either than if you're going to go by that criteria because they weren't even competitive against Alabama. So my thing is keep it consistent. Don't tell me Notre Dame doesn't belong, but A&M does. Notre Dame belongs, in my opinion, I feel like we penalize losing more than we um, give credit for winning. Notre Dame won all season except for the last game. You know, that's just me, though. Again, I could be wrong on that or, you know, that's just how I feel. Notre Dame got their doors blown off in the conference championship and still got these conference championship games. Don't matter to the teams in the top three. ACC championship was a revenge game for Clemson. 
I put a slight asterisk next to Notre Dame's win over Clemson, but DJ you can look, is more than a competent QB. I'll take him over the vast majority. Like, I mean, we if we're going to start using the injuries, um, I hear you, and I get Trevor Lawrence is Trevor Lawrence. Got it, 100%. But, I, you know, we can't start using injuries as excuses for stuff. That's just me, and that's, that's why football is a next man up game, you know. Um, the Big Ten Commission made a big decision, and it should it should have cost OSU. The Big Ten doesn't deserve. It. Yes, thank you. They made a bad decision. Yet they're still going to get the playoff money. Thank you, Rodney. And if I have Ohio State fans in the chat, I am sorry, but that is the truth. That is the truth. Because if it was on the other way around, Ohio State and Alabama played five, six games, y'all would be crying to the to the heavens that there's no way an Alabama or whoever should be in the college football playoff. Group of five might as well have their own playoff. They will never get in. With this system, absolutely. You're right. They'll never get in. There's just no – they'll never get in. They don't even – they don't bring enough money to the table. All of a sudden, Clemson gets two key players and beats them by 24. Was beating them by 31 in the fourth. Alabama is beating them by 50. Six teams, all Power Five conference winners, and one at large, one and two seeds earn a bye. So you're you're more for the the six team playoff. Um, one and two seeds earn a bye. I. It'd be a step up from what we have. I don't like giving uh, – because I can tell you year in and year out who's going to be the one and two teams. Like, I just – to me, give it eight and let everybody play to get in. That, that's just me. Make it eight teams, get everybody to have everybody. Like, in the NCAA basketball tournament, there aren't any buys. There are games to qualify to, like, get into the next bracket or whatever, but there's no buys. Duke doesn't get the one seed uh, and get – and, and get to miss two or three games for by No, I don't like any buys. I want eight teams. Everybody play last two teams standing. It's the real college football champion. That's just me. I don't see a 16 playoff ever happening. The reason Ohio State got pushed in, their brand name, hype. Yeah, I, absolutely. Lawrence, again, they're going to be able to sell. You're absolutely right, uh, cable guy. They're going to be able to sell Lawrence versus Fields, Ohio State versus Clemson. You're absolutely right. Um, oh, hold on. Chat skipped again. I'm sorry, Polk, but the last three times that Notre Dame has played in the championship game or playoff game, they're 0 3. You're not wrong, Maiden Dade, but if that's the case, look, bro, if we're going to go by that logic, I hate to say it like this. Does Miami deserve a bowl game? When's the last time Miami won a bowl game? They haven't. And what, six, seven? I don't know. You tell me. My, it's been a long time, right? My, the point I'm making is we're not. let's not judge what Notre Dame did in the past. This isn't, those, this isn't any of those Notre Dame teams. I get what you're saying. Every time Notre Dame gets in the big game, they fold. I got it. But you know what? If you use that logic, you know, Again, does Miami deserve bowl invites? Because every time they get in the bowl game, they don't win theirs. So my, my thing is I'm not penalizing guys, especially for stuff that happened in the past. And I'm not going to – to me, wins count more than losses. Like that's just how I've always viewed it. And for some people, it's vice versa. Some people's like, oh, that's a terrible loss, and no win could ever make that up. To me, give credit for accomplishments. I'm looking at Notre Dame, and I'm saying – there's two really good wins and one bad loss. I think that outweighs – one outweighs the other. Two outweighs one. That's just how I look at it. Um, it's a farce. The group of five teams don't get a legit shot. Cincinnati is one of the few teams who would play legit defense this year. Yeah, we'll see how Cincinnati looks against Georgia. Polk, why do you think there – what What do you think if there was a commissioner, like a college football playoff commissioner – or something like that? Is that what you get trying to get at? If you do a 10-team playoff with the conference champions, there is no selection or any way for bias to enter. Seems like another favoritism with the playoff stuff. It's marketing. Who wouldn't want to see Trevor? All right, yeah, we talked about that for sure, Sniper. Um, do you think this whole COVID mess, there will be teams shuffling conferences? Um, Initially, I would say no. But you see how – bad the Pac-12 and the Big Ten dropped the ball this year 
And as soon as that happened, there were teams like a Nebraska and even Ohio State who were very against not playing. Now, eventually they decided to go by what the big the big uh, 10 wanted to do and not really go against the grain. If that happens again, now I expect next year to really be a different story. I don't know how good this vaccine is or I'm pretty sure they're not going to force anybody to take it. It'll probably all be voluntarily. Um, I think next year is going to be, I don't know if it's going to be normal, but I think it's going to be more normal than it was this year. So you might not come in a position where teams take that jump. But if it isn't, if it gets worse or stays the same and a conference wants to try to, you know, say, oh, no, we're not going to um, play at the beginning of the season, you, you could see some realignment. You could see, a, a especially if it's a power school, like on Ohio State. And even in Nebraska, who's not on the field any good, that's still a name brand school. And they say, you know what? No, we're not doing this this time. You, you put us behind the eight ball last year when you didn't let us play when everybody else started playing. We're, we're leaving. And the schools have the power to do that. They make enough money in their own right, most of these schools, to leave a, to leave a conference. So you could – I don't know. I don't think it's going to happen. It wouldn't shock me if it happened, though. Like, don't I don't think the Mountain West played – I don't – Correct me if I'm wrong. The Mountain West, I don't believe, played one game this year. Like a Boise State. I don't think the Mountain West played any games at all this year. It wouldn't surprise me if we get into another year and the Mountain West is still standing strong that they're not playing games. I wouldn't surprise me if you see a Boise State say, okay, well, that's the case. Let me go to the pack. Or let me, you know, let me let me leave because you guys aren't doing what the university may feel is in the best interest of the university. The Pac-12 gave themselves no chance. Conference is already not good. Then you only play six games. This year's playoffs is fixed. If you think about it, since Notre Dame is supposedly part of ACC this year, ACC got two teams. Yeah, no, that's true. ACC has two teams in it. Um, but remember, that's not true that the ACC has two teams in before the SEC because SEC, what, was it two years ago when Alabama and Georgia played for the championship? So, Remember that. Um, the commissioner also tailored the rules for Ohio State. Absolutely. OSU looked very vulnerable against Northwestern. And that's what I'm saying when people are like, well, they beat two ranked teams. You beat Northwestern and Indiana. I'm not taking anything away from those schools, but come on. In a normal year, everybody wants to talk about how overrated North Carolina was, who just scored again. Everybody wants to talk about how overrated North Carolina was. Well, how overrated was Northwestern in, in Indiana in this year, where in the normal year they're probably not even top 25 schools? You know, like, if it was a big football school, I consider leaving in my commissioner canceled games. That's the case. Clemson had one rake win besides Notre Dame yesterday in Miami. That overrated. There was a way too much politics in college football. It, absolutely. If we're being honest, since he should be the fourth. The biggest game of the year, they get beat by 24 points. They don't deserve that spot. It's all about Benjamins. OSU is about the Benjamins. Daddy. What, boy? Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Um, you guys are commenting, so I'm going to take a break on the comments for a little bit and get back to the other bowl game so then we can get into this FSU talk at the uh, re, uh, when we're reviewing the season. Um, so, yeah, so those are the New York Six, and I know I we, we went on and ran it on a long time because I'm just i really disgusted with the fact that Ohio State's in it, and I know people are really mad about Notre Dame. I personally believe Notre Dame has – a, a, an argument. It wouldn't. I wouldn't be mad if they didn't. It wouldn't have made it in. But I think they have a legit argument in it. And if you're going to use the blowout uh, loss as an excuse, then Texas A&M doesn't deserve a spot either. Um, but those are your. That's your playoff. Alabama will play um, Notre Dame, and Clemson will play Ohio State. Then your New Year Six. Your New Year Six to, is going to be Oregon versus Iowa State. Um, that's kind of an interesting game to me. Oregon has, I mean, if you didn't watch, uh, we watched it, and if I'm not mistaken. Now, I granted, I didn't pay a lot of attention to the game. I kind of went back and paid attention to it. If you didn't watch Thibodeau, 
that should name should ring familiar to Florida State fans because what that's what could have been. If you didn't watch Thibodeau, who plays for Oregon against USC, whew, probably a future number one overall pick in that kid. Uh, so uh, he's going to be on Purdy's brothers, Brock Purdy's ass all night. So I kind of think Oregon might pull that one off. Um, then you have the Orange Bowl with UNC and a and That should be a shootout. I think that's actually one of the better games. I think that's a I think that's a solid game uh, to watch. I think that'd be a fun game to watch UNC versus AM. and um, Yeah, UNC a and and UNC just scored again. Uh, Cotton Bowl, Oklahoma versus Florida. Another sh- <clears throat> should be another shootout in that game. And then Cincy versus UGA. That's probably the most intriguing matchup because you have. <clears throat> You have a, a group of five school going up what's arguably, you know, le- a legit SEC defense, even though defense has kind of been all over the place for a ton of teams this year. Uh, you know, that's going to be an intriguing game in itself. So I'm, I'm kind of cool with all the New Year's six games. I think I think the worst one of the bunch is probably Oregon and Ohio- Iowa State. But if you just want to watch Thibodeau, I think you should tune into that. Um and I, I'd be interested to watch him. I think UNC versus Texas A&M might be a 63-62 to 62 game. Like, I think that might be a shootout and be fun to watch there. Same thing with Oklahoma and Florida. I mean, Oklahoma maybe plays a little bit better defense than I've seen them play in recent years. Um, Florida still doesn't play any defense, so I expect somewhat of a shootout there. I think Florida's going to win that game, though. And then UGA, I mean, I'll pick UGA just off the top, but it wouldn't shock me if Cincinnati is a lot better than we think. And then you have, to finish it off, again, there's a bunch of other bowl games that I don't didn't want to go in every single bowl game. But Miami and Oklahoma State, to me, is an interesting game in the Cheez-It Bowl. <laughs> the name's funny, but honestly, I think that's a solid game for Miami. Um, I do not think Oklahoma's just some pushover. If anybody thinks that, I think they're very well mistaken. Uh, Oklahoma State was pretty much on top of the Big 12 for a majority of the year. Um, if, if Miami doesn't bring their A game, I don't know if they can beat Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State's going to score some points. Um, we'll see if Derek King and company can keep pace. Um, I, I, at this point, I won't pick a winner, but I think that's a solid game and going to be a fun game to watch as well. So that's pretty much the wrap up, man, on all the bowl games. Now we'll get back to the comments and see what else we're talking about. <clears throat> Don't know why Jimbo thinks they need to be in. Can we honestly say Kellen Mond is better than any of those four QBs? I don't think so. I think it's say at four because it keeps expanding. It's going to turn into March Madness. Well, I don't think it, 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 they need to keep it at eight and it should never expand past eight. Okay, you have a bunch of what, – what do you have, 20, 30, 40, 50 bowl games anyway? The bowl season could essentially be your March madness. Eight games to me or eight team playoff is fine. It does. It's not too much. It's not too little. But when you have four teams, like, like I said, it's not even a playoff. It's an invite. It's an invitational. And how do you determine who, who deserves what? I remember, man, let me look it up real quick because I remember I was pissed off. And I want to say that it, this was two or three years ago. Penn State and Ohio State. Penn State. Championship. Penn State won the last conference title. It was 2016, I think. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, Penn State beats Ohio State in the um, conference championship. But Penn State, I think, had two, two losses. I think Penn State had two losses. Ohio State may have been undefeated. 
Penn State beats Ohio State in the conference championship, wins the Big Ten, but Ohio State gets the playoff nod. That's why I'm for the 18 playoff. Ohio, Penn State, again, staying with the way I view things, they won their way into the playoff. They beat the team, won their conference. They were, they were determined the best team in their conference, only to not even get an opportunity to, to play that out. Stuff like that I don't like. Penn State should have had a guaranteed spot in the playoff. Now, Ohio State still could have gotten in that in that large bid if we went with the with the 18 playoff. But Penn State deserved that. Fact spoke, I agree with the Miami correlation. OSU was putting up some excuses. They got 22 years play out now due to COVID. Rick Johnson throwing shots at UM. I'm not defending Miami, but there is clear bias towards Notre Dame. I mean, there's gonna Notre Dame's one of the older oldest programs in the country, so yeah, there's always gonna be bias towards them. If we go to eight, what keeps number nine and ten from complaining? You can't complain. That's just my opinion. If you don't win your conference, if, if if the criteria for eight is win your conference, two at large, and the and the, and the um the group of five gets one guaranteed slot. If you don't win your conference, you don't have any complaining. You don't have any complaining if you don't win your conference. The at-large bids are going to be a bit uh, objective or whatever. I can I can maybe see how some complaints may come from depending on who the at-large bids is, but the at-larges are going to come strictly from the Power Five. Um, eight and if see nine and ten can complain all they want. Win your conference and shut or shut up. And if you can't win the conference, your at large bid should be guy, you know, teams with one loss, maybe two, depending on again, that's why you have a resume and we're able to go over that resume. But don't win, you don't win your conference, you don't have a, a, a way to complain, in my opinion. We beat West Virginia 16 in 16, 17 season. We Oklahoma State. Hopefully, they don't put up forty. Uh, our last bowl victory was in twenty sixteen, and before that, it was two thousand six. There you go. Okay, trust me. I know we haven't loved up to our standard. To God knows how long. I just hate the favoritism media bashes towards Notre Dame. We play Oklahoma State. An eighteen playoff is more fair than we have now. Absolutely. A and M got beat in their second game of the year. What do you expect? They only played one game before that. Who would go inside Alabama Stadium and beat them? I mean, Ole Miss went in and put up a shootout against Alabama, and what game of the year was that? I mean, I don't care what game of the year it was. A&M got blown out, period. They got blown out. I just don't see how A&M can deserve a spot in Notre Dame. What is A&M's best win? Florida? A Florida team that lost to LSU. I mean, again, we want to play the round robin and, and, and play this game. What are the good teams AM has beaten compared to Notre Dame? I don't know. Just me. But, again, we can go back and forth on all this. The announcers in the Big Ten Championship were talking about how OSU was dealing with injuries. Like they haven't played. <laughs> dealing with injuries. Okay, cool. And the whole country's dealing with COVID. I mean, every week teams are losing players and got teams are fielding half teams. I mean, again, Ohio State, they have no excuse. It's just a bunch of it's just a bunch of jokes. Chat skipped on me here. Let me come back. Yeah, the Mo Mountain West did West did play this year. They did play. Oh, see, I didn't even know that. I don't I didn't recall them having like any games on TV this year. Fields is in Fields in Ohio State equals overrated. I like Fields. He may not. I don't think he's as good as some people may think. I do like Justin Fields. I'm very interested to see how he does at the next level. Um, but yeah, overrated. I don't know. I don't want to say he's overrated. Ohio State as a whole is overrated though. In a normal year, Northwestern Indiana lose at, at, at least at least three games. Probably more like four or five. <laughs> probably more like four or five if we're being real. Uh, Notre Dame only have one good win at a 10 NCC game. Jimbo has eight wins in the toughest conference of them all. I mean, Jimbo beat, what, a four-win Ole Miss team, 
five win LSU team. Like, you know what I'm saying? We can just go down this road. Every t- A lot of teams were down this year. Miami Hurricanes is like the Cowboys. You either love them or you hate them, but you tune in. What up, Gator hater? Sniper gang, I agree. If Oregon goes undefeated, do they get do they get in? They have a decent reputation. I don't think so because they were. I mean, USC. I mean, look, Oregon's cool and all. USC has one of the biggest name brands in all of college football, and they were completely disrespecting USC. And USC was undefeated up until that championship game. So I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't think so. I think they were. I think the Pac-12 was ass out of luck <laughs> from the jump anyway. Well, because to me, for one, it's not a good conference anyway. And yeah, I don't think they respect that West Coast football. I don't respect it, honestly, when I watch it, if I'm being honest. Um, that West Coast stuff is some of the worst football I watch. Um, it's entertaining offensively. Skill their skill players are fine, but when you start talking about in the trenches and defensively, I uh I actually cringe when I watch it a lot of times. If Ohio State had beaten the ranked 95 Nebraska, ranked 97 Michigan, 94 Penn State, they can say they'd be legit. Rate, what a joke. <laughs> nope on Oregon. Uh, put Notre Dame in the SEC, guarantee you they don't get eight wins. They would lose to Florida, Alabama, and AM easily. Possibly. I don't nec- I want to say you're wrong. I don't necessarily disagree with that. Oregon is four and two. Oklahoma should not be there at six. Oklahoma owns the Big 12. They've owned the Big 12 forever now. Until Texas can ever get, if Texas can ever get their stuff together, but who knows? If Oregon did go unbeaten, they wouldn't have been there. West Coast bias would have denied them. Yep, that's what I was just saying. I don't, people don't really respect that West Coast football, and I'm one of them. Oklahoma State will boat race Miami. Uh oh, Gator hater out here. Eight is the right number. Absolutely, Terrence. Group of five, best record, deserves a lock in. I agree. You got your two, you give me your five conference winners. Two at larges and the one group of five school with the best overall record. Um, eight would be perfect. Remember that Oklahoma State has very good defense. I think this could turn into a blowout, in my opinion, if Oklahoma State offense can get in rhythm. Miami guys, I need you to come back. They are going at your head right now. Is Miami going to be Oklahoma State? There's people that think this could be a blowout. I think it's going to be a fun game to watch. I don't. I don't think it's going to be a blowout. I don't think it's going to be a blowout. And the, and the Geese College Football Playoffs, there should be three games of the year. Now I got to watch Bama hammer a team by 50. Feels like every year the College Football Playoffs, somebody gets blown out. I hear you. A lot of times they pick the wrong teams. How many bowl games do we have in total in a normal season? That's a good question. I don't know off the top of my head. I'd have to look that up. Um, if you go back, look, there have only been two or three competitive playoff games, yet you guys want to expand. Yeah, I want all conference. I want to me, if you're going to call it the power five, I think all power five should be represented. I mean, that's like saying in the in the NBA, you don't see guy or teams get swept, but they won their division or whatever the case may be. They get an overall record that determines they deserve to be in a playoff. They still get an opportunity to play. All I'm asking for is that if you win the ACC, the Big Ten, the Big 12, the pack, uh, the pack twelve. Who, who am I leaving out? That's only four. ACC, uh, SEC. If you win those big Power Five conference, you deserve a place at the table. That's just my opinion. If they get blown out, they get blown out. It just proves that the conferences are like a Pac twelve or a Big Twelve. Maybe aren't all that like we thought they were. But to me, you deserve a place. And then, the, and then, and then the con, and then the conferences that have like legit multiple teams in that conference, like an SEC, gets an at-large bid. An ACC may get an an at-large bid. And I think that would also force Notre Dame in a lot of aspects to start to join a conference. To hell with that NBC contract and that money. If Notre Dame starts not getting these at-large bids bids or whatever the case, that would end up forcing Notre Dame to maybe join a conference. So – to me, expand it. <clears throat> Sniper Gang and Maiden Dade have become best friends. Uh, if Cincy wins, they just going to say UGA. I agree with that. You know how that goes. UGA wasn't up to it. Yeah, you know how that narrative always plays out. 
Uh, yeah, it was 2016. Penn State beat them in the regular season, but won their half of the conference and won the title game, but were denied a playoff because they had two losses. And that, and that was an absolute joke, in my opinion. Just absolute joke. And Ohio State could have came back if we if we went to the the 18 playoff. Ohio State maybe deserved an at large bid, but Penn State deserved the chance to play for a championship that year in a playoff atmosphere. Now in the BCS, no, but in a playoff a playoff type situation, there's no reason why Penn State didn't have an opportunity. What up, Dennis? What up, Phil? <clears throat> Oh yeah, Phil. Phil, UNC just scored again. Eight. What up, Phil? I should Phil. Phil the cane, and it should be eight hundred yards behind it. Um, sniper gang. So Notre Dame gets a pass to get blown out in the playoff game for what? So we can laugh at it. It's about giving everyone a true chance at a national title. The G five schools don't have a legit shot. Losing one game shouldn't disqualify you if you're playing. I agree. Depend and it all depend, depending on your strength of schedule. Losing one game shouldn't rule you out of a of a of a of a, of a shot. I agree with uh I agree with Rodney. Um, no, we're gonna refer to you as Phil the Kang eight hundred. Kudos to the ACC with getting two teams into the playoff. Everyone in the conference will get a nice night, a very nice check. But as FSU fan, Notre Dame helps the conference. They do. I think I think we got to put our bias aside and, and stop hating. Notre Dame is a plus, not for just for FSU. It's a plus for Miami. The, the reason that SEC has all this money, because look at the big schools they have in Georgia and Auburn. And these are massive universities. I mean, go to some of these stadiums. They look like cathedrals. Tennessee sits over 108,000 people in that thing. Um, Notre Dame boost the, the 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 revenue of the ACC it just does cuz football is king and football is the money maker and UNC is a basketball school and Duke's a basketball school and Louisville's a basketball school those schools love basketball more than football period the only true football schools in the ACC are Clemson Miami and Florida State if you add Notre Dame to that that really helps round out that conference and, and, and bring – and that's – I'm no defender of the ACC, quite frankly. I, I hate the conference, if I'm being quite honest with you, and I wish Florida State would leave it. But with that said, if you're going to compete with the SEC and the big boys of college football, because even the Big 12 has football schools in Michigan and Ohio State and Penn State, tradi traditional football schools, ACC needs that. They need that. Jimbo beat a Florida team that is better than Notre Dame, but they but but Notre Dame beat a Clemson team that's better than A and M. You, you see how that goes, Sniper? Or just you know. <clears throat> the ACC was surviving. When Notre Dame sports came in ACC. NBC helps Notre Dame money wise. ACC was surviving. B Notre Dame sports. I'm trying to think. You're trying to say before Notre Dame sports came to the ACC. The ACC. That key word in that no blood is ACC was surviving, not thriving. Surviving. Notre Dame helps. Helps. It. Notre Dame helps, man. It just does. No squad. I don't want to have this exhausting argument. Oklahoma State ain't doing nothing. Uh. Haters hope we get blown out. Comes with the territory. I just hope they don't hang 40 plus. So to me, Canes, uh, it sounds like you're not you're not too confident in your in your in your squad. Maybe you think that y'all are gonna score and have a shootout, but you don't want to see them hang up hang 40 on y'all. Um all of those are results. Mm, if we play up my Harry Hur Hurricane Standard, we should win, but I really want a new defensive coordinator. If you want a new D coordinator, then you should hope Oklahoma State hangs up 40 on y'all. Maybe he'll get fired. Ohio State might get blown out. To beat Clemson, you have to put up at least 40. This year, Ohio State is very different than last year's team. Ohio State defense is very suspect. Northwestern 
Okay, Northwestern Illinois play Florida State in the Orange Bowl. Northern Illinois play Florida State in the Orange Bowl. That was years ago. That was 20. That was the year before the national championship game, Todd. Um, definitely not cheating. You sound crazy. Polk will even admit teams were extremely talented. What are y'all What are y'all talking about? What are y'all arguing about? Not y'all arguing about something crazy. Uh, Philip Kane Field recruiting violation players that shouldn't even be eligible. Don't ever say I ain't pop, pop in on the random, though. For once, you finally popped in, Terrence. Thank you. Um, that's what's up, bro. I'm from Lake. Recruiting violations and cheating happens every day in college football. So if you were the eight teams this year, who would you pick? Oh, this year is a is a is a, again to me. This year isn't the year to have eight. This year is a cluster. Um, but if it, it it's easy, it's kind of actually kind of easy. Conference champions. So this year again, because it's such a bad year to make this example. Oregon is in there. Ohio State's in there. Um, Clemson's in there. Alabama's in there. Who am I forgetting? Clemson, Alabama, Ohio State, Oregon, and uh, Oklahoma. Those are your those are your five conference champions. My two at larges, probably A and M and Notre Dame. And then Cincinnati and Cincinnati gets the 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 group of five spot. There's your college football playoff right there. There you go. They need to put me on the committee. Alabama one, Clemson two. As much as Ohio State shouldn't be in college football, I ha- I have to put them there. Committee doesn't have the balls to put out for. I don't know why you have to put them there. I just I don't believe you have to put them there. Um, G5 deserves a tie with the 18 playoff. Now, 14, no, I agree. 14, no, the, the group of five doesn't have a resume to stack up in a 14 playoff. You give it eight teams, group of five has to have a spot guaranteed. Eight and two, Phil DeCane. Your name is Phil DeCane 800. Need more out of conference matchups like Bama, USC. Agree with that. Phil King got busted twice for recruiting violations. Are y'all talking about recruiting violations or something? Like, what are we talking about here? Oh, man, did you, you know, you tripping. I'm not even going to get into this, but if you think that, uh, you know what, I'm not even going to get into it. I'm not, I'm not going to do it. Um, do they boost enough? Do they boost it enough for us to fire Norvell? So you think Norvell deserves to be fired year one? Um, Clemson going to be Ohio State for two years in a row. A Notre Dame fifteen million dollar annual TV contract was added to the ACT media. There you go. That's what I'm talking about, Derek. Legend has it North Carolina just scored again. <laughs> Is Notre Dame QB senior? We play them next. Uh, yeah, Notre Dame's gonna lose their entire offensive line and their quarterback, and probably some more players. Absolutely, they won't be the same team that we played this year. Uh, Ardavius, the fans talking about irrelevant ish. I just came in to talk football. I feel you always bring that energy the way you start arguing with folks. So, come on, bro. Come on. But what you want to talk about, Phil? What you want to talk about? I don't know what the deal Nick Saban made, but ain't it strange that Bama gets almost every five star? They got five stars backing up five stars. Um, Look, you got to understand that um, Alabama is a big NFL pipeline. Um, If you don't think that there's some – Envelopes being handed out, I think you're delusional there. But at the end of the day, man, these kids want to get these kids want to get to the to the lead. Go look at what Florida State was doing in the '90s. You know, it's it's not this this what, what Nick Saban's doing isn't groundbreaking. I mean, imagine if they, if they had those recruiting rankings back in the '90s when Bobby Bowden was getting everybody he pretty much wanted. It would have it would have looked something very similar to what you see at Alabama right now. All right, so you guys are all arguing. I don't 
Some, somehow we got into FSU. My my FSU Miami just can't even get along. Somehow we got into that, and we talking about the college football playoffs. Guess what? Neither of our teams in the playoffs. So what the hell are we arguing about? But y'all go ahead and have at it. Um, <laughs> for the last about hour of this show, we're talking about FSU's team. What we saw this year. First, we're gonna just go over the raw numbers. Then we're gonna go over uh, what do, what do you know what do we like what bunch of stuff we obviously didn't like and sort of what's the future outlook going forward. Um, let's start with the offense and just the raw numbers again. Then we'll go over more in depth. Um, Offensively, FSU scored 25.8 points per game. They were 35% on third down, 53% on fourth down. Finished the year with 1,771 passing yards, 10 touchdowns, 13 interceptions. Um, Jordan Travis led led the way with 1,000 yards, 1,056 yards passing. At 55% completion percentage, six touchdowns, uh, six interceptions. James Blackman, 366 yards, 56% completion percentage, two touchdowns, three interceptions. Chubba Purdy had 219, 50% completion percentage, two touchdowns, one interception. And Rotomaker, 130 yards, 58% completion percentage, and no touchdowns and three interceptions. That's your quarterback numbers. Um, Yeah, we got to get better quarterback play. <laughs> just off the bat, just looking at the raw stats, it's like, uh, you know, for the year, FSU what finished played a total of nine games and you only were able to muster up ten TDs through the air, not even two thousand yards passing. I mean, you, you have to improve that. And with the addition of Mackenzie Milton, I think you're going to see a big boost in that quarterback room next year. Um, rushing yards. FSU pretty much finishes with eighteen hundred yards rushing. 5.1 yards per carry, 200 yards per game, and 19 touchdowns. So offensively, the damage was done on the ground. Um, Jordan Travis had 562 yards on the year, 5.8 a clip, 7 TDs. Corbin second on the team with 401, 5 yards per carry, 5 TDs. Like as much as grief as people want to give Jay Sean Corbin, the man still averaged 5 yards a carry. Webb, 366 yards, 5.3 yards of carry, three TDs. And Toll Feely was basically – well, he was basically getting 10 yards every time he touched the ball, 9.6 yards per carry, two touchdowns, 356 yards for true freshman Lawrence Toa Feely. And FSU finishes the season only averaging 396.7 yards per game. The, these offensive stats – they're really depressing to look at. The sad part is I felt like the offense improved. <laughs> it, it actually improved. Um, and you guys are still arguing about nothing. Post the FSU, Clemson, ACC splits an additional $12 million from two teams in the playoffs and an additional $15 million Notre Dame brought. I mean, a five-star who wouldn't want to be a coach from a legendary coach, a chance to help his family begin the NFL as a five. Yeah, he's talking about the Alabama stuff. Uh, I saw zero change, if not regression, on offense. Um, I think you're absolutely wrong, Terrence. I don't know what you're talking about when you say you saw no change and regression on offense. I think the only position that regressed um, – was the wide receiving group. Without the two defensive ends leaving Miami in trouble, uh, I like improvement on O-line. Defense looked. We stacked. Da, 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 da. Rotomaker struggled against yeah, – Rotomaker struggled 
period. Um, some wideouts cause missed days. Some wideouts use the term damage locks loosely. Uh, Good point, Polk, about Bama. But as far as FSU, like Miami, got to get the defense right. Not sure, but I think we have a chance. Can't wait for the next run game. Run game was very was way, way better this year than last year. Wide receivers did, wide receivers regressed. Um, offensive line progress, obviously. Wide receivers regressed. Speaking of that, I think you're going to be interested in these receiving numbers. Let's read down these receiving numbers. Ontario Wilson, 31 catches, 391 yards, two touchdowns. Tomorrow, Ontario, 23 catches, 289, one touchdown. This one surprised me. A lot of people keep saying we got to get Cam, and I'm one of them. Like, you got to get Cam McDonald more involved. Cam McDonald had the same amount of receptions he as Tamari on Terry. Cameron Do- Cam McDonald had the same amount of touchdowns. You know, he was tied for the lead of touchdowns from receivers. Um, I think the limitations to Travis's, you know, throwing, which he has, he does have some limitations at throwing the ball, and the fact that they completely changed the game plan to utilize him to his strengths. But I, I think Cam McDonald under next year's quarterback, Mackenzie Milton, he could he could really improve from these numbers. I mean, he had 23 catches, 263 yards, and two touchdowns. Not great numbers, but, I mean, again, none of these numbers I'm going to read are great. Nobody had over 500 yards receiving this year. Nobody reached 400 yards receiving this year. Um, Jay Sean Corbin had 19 catches, 150, 15 yards. Keyshawn Helton only had 14 catches for 119 yards. Toll Philly had 12 catches for 120. Warren Thompson had all but five catches for 104 yards. I I am almost positive, and I couldn't find this stat because, damn it, I looked for it. I'm almost 100% positive Warren Thompson had more drops than receptions this year. So the, while the receiving numbers aren't great by any stretch of the imagination, I think you see a Cam McDonald was actually targeted more than people, I think, seem to realize, including myself. And hopefully that number continues to pick up. Uh, Ultimately, when I look at this offense and I talk about how all these, the reason I say the offense progresses is because we didn't have James Blackman back there taking sacks and and turning the ball over a million times. That alone progressed the offense, period. We saw the offensive line be better. We saw the running back as a whole be, a running back room as a whole be, whole be better. And I think the wide receivers really took a step backward. And maybe that has a lot to do with the way they called games in the passing. Um, I think McKenzie Milton, if he's anything like he was at UCF, he makes this offense straight up legit. I, I honestly believe that. I honestly believe that. Um run game. Pope, that Alabama game will be such a blowout that would that world will see Bryce Young make his appearance. Bryce Young will have the opportunity to be in that game with five minutes left. Terry played like five games, so uh please tell me that the point of keeping Fuller. Gotta talk to Norvell, man. I don't know. FSU's wide receiver regress because of Dugans. That dude is a joke. Get rid of that dude ASAP. With a healthy McKenzie Milton and Jordan Travis, we can put some points next year with the players around them. The only thing that I got out of those stats is that the offensive line got better, got a lot better in the running game. Pretty much, we turned into a running team. That's what we. That was our identity this year. It was really a running team. Bryce Young versus Jake Garcia next year. First game for those annoying Kings. No, they think De'Aaron King's going to be back, so I don't see that. I don't see Jake Garcia coming in being King. Right? Am I wrong? Toe Philly averaged 10 yards every time he touched the ball. Yes, he did. 
FSU is automatically losing five games next year. Man, Phil, 800 yards. I can't say that FSU's ever given up that many yards. But Miami can't say that, Phil. Stop it. See, Phil, you come in here with that energy and you wonder why people come at your head. You come in here with the foolishness. Maiden Day be here all the time. I got a bunch of other Miami guys be here all the time, and they don't come in here with that same – people don't come at their head like that. But as soon as Phil the King jump in here, everybody already know what it is. So you got to take them lumps yourself. We get we don't get better in the trenches. We will suck. Wide receivers, DBs, linebackers need also step up. Uh, and you know what, Jordan, we will – I don't even know what these guys are talking about. I guess you still – Coming from a person that thinks the Eric King is a Heisman candidate. Mackenzie Milton, go go check his stats compared to the Eric King stats at their power or group of five schools. I'm just saying. I'm not saying he's a Heisman candidate. If he's anything like he was before the knee injury, he's close. You're talking about a guy that threw for over 4,000 yards and 30-some-odd touchdowns and, like, what, five interceptions or something like that. He's close. Do you think the O-line can block well enough to get – they have to continue to improve it. I would like to see them add at least one transfer offensive lineman, but I have confidence that O-line is going to continue to progress. I think a good quarterback sniper makes receivers better. I do think our receivers really need to work on separation. But look, I think we got some freshmen that are going to play next year. I'm counting Destin Hill in this class. Destin Hill is going to be on the field day one, best wide receiver day one. I'm calling it now. All right? Malik McClain brings a, a, a 6'5 frame that no other player on that offense has. He's going to see some snaps. I'm calling that now. Mackenzie Milton, I believe, can make a good quarterback for that matter, makes your receivers better a good quarterback. It's just like you saw Jordan Travis as a good athlete with the potential to become a good quarterback, but Jordan Travis as a good athlete, he just made the entire offense better. I think a good quarterback is going to make your receivers that much better. Blackman, a.k.a. Beanpole. He was funny. Having dropped his head every time he turned it over. <clears throat> Kane's fans are willing to sell their soul for King to come back. They probably in his DM saying, please come back. Jake Garcia reminds me of Baker. He got a real strong arm, got a better arm than King, but King ain't no NFL QB. I like how they are transforming the wide receiver room, bringing in tall guys. Brandon B, we beat, you know, with four different QBs so far. We'll let Jake get his chance next year. King is coming back. Or will he – is King coming back? Or I don't know, Dennis, you the Miami fan. You tell me. I could care less whether King comes back or not. I want us to move on from King, especially with Jake Garcia coming in. We already have enough cute running backs. Do you really want to play Jake Garcia game one against Alabama, though? I'm just asking. Because I know, you know, Jake Garcia is a good – to me, I'm going to be honest with you guys, I don't – I didn't follow Jake Garcia's recruitment, but I heard a lot. Um, and you, Miami fans may not be, Miami fans may not be uh, keen on this name, but Jake Garcia reminds me of a guy named Malik Henry, who was also a California kid. Um, Florida State fans know who I'm talking about. This was a kid that had a ton of talent, was one of the top quarterbacks in the nation. But he had red flags all over him, and Jimbo still took him. It ended up costing – it ended up biting Jimbo in the ass, and that's why you really saw the downward spiral after Jameis Winston left in that quarterback room because they really put all their eggs into the Malik Henry thing, and it just didn't work. Again, if you watched – um. That Netflix show where they talk, I forget the name of that show, but Malik Henry was on that. Malik Henry played at Nevada. Malik Henry played at four or five different, just like Jake Garcia. 
He went to like three or four different high schools, ended up transferring to three or four or five different colleges. Kid just had a lot of issues. And to me, Jake Garcia looks like that. Again, I don't know the background on him. I don't know why he transferred to so many different high schools. But Jake Garcia reminds me of a kid that might just have a ton of baggage. And he may be more headache than he ends up being worth. I hope it works out for you. But he really reminds me of a Malik Henry. The last chance you. That's what it was called. Thank you. He was on that show. Malik Henry I'm talking about. So, you know, uh, that's just me. You know, and maybe I, I don't. I, uh, explain to me why Jake went to five different high schools. And like, I don't know. To me, he seems, I don't know. Just it, very similar to me. Very similar circumstances between Jake Garcia and Malik Henry. Hell no, you don't want Jake Garcia versus Alabama. Garcia has Johnny Manziel written all over him. So much talent, but personality issues and poor decision making. See, that's where me and you are on the same page, Brandon. Miami fans potentially apparently don't see it that way. Um, because main day saying, no, that's not Jake. No, Jake is better than Malik Henry. I'm not talking about on the field. See, I think let's not get it. Let's let's understand what I'm talking about, Hurricane Millie. I'm not saying Jake Garcia may not be a better prospect on the field. I'm simply talking about behind the scene i'm talking about their roads from california because malik henry did the same thing that jake garcia is doing now started off in california ended up coming to img over here in florida only to leave img and go to another high school i mean jake garcia had is doing the same type of things that's more what i'm talking about what's the baggage that jake garcia is bringing with him and is he going to be able to is he going to be able, you know, to overcome his demons, so to speak, that Malik Henry was never able to overcome? That's all I'm asking. Uh, I don't know who's a better. I mean, Jake Garcia may be the better talented kid, but that's not really what I'm getting at. Need the experience beat down like North Carolina. Jake isn't that. He's he's a smart kid, a leader. Um, I'm not saying he's stupid. I don't think Malik Henry was stupid. You're saying he's a smart kid and he's a leader. Again, you got to just give me some background then. Give me some context. What's with all the different high schools? Is his family in the military or something? Serious question. What's with all the five different high schools? What's with all the theatrics that are surrounding Jake Garcia? I just would like some background on it. Because we heard the th same things about Malik Henry. And I, want, I, I personally went to Orlando that year. Malik Henry was a true freshman and, and watched that spring game between him and DeAndre Francois. And Malik Henry was the best quarterback on that field. But little would, did we know Malik Henry wouldn't end up being in that program very long much after that. Um, I'm just asking. No, James Williams and Leonard Taylor is someone y'all better watch out for. Well, no one's talking about that. Um. No, we don't need Malik Henry. I'm not saying we need him, Sniper. What are you talking about? I think yeah, – are you listening, guys? I'm not – okay. No, Jake only left because of COVID. That doesn't sound right to me. Jake left to the south where COVID is just as rampant, if not anywhere else in the country. To, I mean – or or are or, or you saying he left the west coast – because they weren't playing football to come play football in the South. But again, I'm talking five different high schools, not one. Jake Garcia has been in like five different high schools. I'm not just saying one. That is a red flag. Okay. But these kids are built different. They switch high schools, transfer portal. It wasn't like that when we was growing up. I know, absolutely. Um, I'm just saying, I'm just I'm just pointing out the same things that we saw from Malik Henry. And it turned out the way it turned out. I could be wrong. I'm not saying I'm right on it. I'm just simply asking for context. We're not talking about his talent. We're talking about Garcia as a person. And I'm not even saying Garcia is a bad person before I finish reading Brandon's comment. 
but I am talking about like what's the deal there? Seems to be something more than everybody wants to acknowledge. Um, I know you guys are happy to get a four-star QB, but the writing it, the writing seems to be on the wall. I, I agree with Brandon. The writing seems to be on the wall. There's something there, but ultimately, maybe they got it figured out. Um, he's a transfer from California because his mother and father went through a split up. Fair enough. Got you. Uh, they not the same. You don't know that they're not the same. I'm not even saying they're the same. I'm saying it's similar circumstances. Um, a lot of people's parents sacrificed a lot so he can play football. I'm glad he got a chance to play. I'm glad he got a chance to play. And he ain't glad he got a chance to He's going to get his chance. Trayshawn Harrison, DJ Matthews leaving her, our receiving room. Our young receivers weren't ready to be thrown out there. Um, a little bit of some inside information. If Miami was allowed to play football early this year, he would have transferred to Miami Northwestern, and he never would have went to Georgia. Um James Williams only a five star because of his size. No way he's played. He he plays do at six five. He's already two twenty five. I'm that's a prospect I'm very interested to watch. I don't think James Williams is bad. Now I'm not gonna lie. I haven't dissected his film because he's not a seminal. So it ain't like I watched him like that. Um. Well, bro, six five two twenty five. I say it all the time. You, you can't teach that. So, hey, um, that ain't Jake from State Farm. <laughs> Grant Garcia transferred because California wasn't playing football. His parents divorced, so he could move to Georgia. Got you. The only writing on the wall is Miami about to roll off five more years on FSU. Sure they are. Uh, Marco Gino, I'm being serious. He made only about three tackles the whole game. He went to Valdosta. He was told he couldn't play, so he went to Atlanta, and he played. Got you. I'm not saying you said we need him. I'm just saying we didn't need him on the team. Um, at the time, we needed him. I don't think you can deny that. You can look back in hindsight, Sniper, and say, yeah, we didn't need him because of the extra baggage. Malik Henry, we needed him. We needed him to be good because they put all their eggs into that. that. Malik Henry was the heir apparent to Jameis Winston. He didn't pan out, and you see what happened. It was completely downhill quarterback from there. They had to go, you know, and I'm not saying DeAndre Francois didn't have talent. Malik Henry was just better. And, uh, yeah, I just – if you're able to go back in that situation, I bet you Jimbo wouldn't have recruited Malik Henry knowing what he know, what he ended up knowing. I'm just, I just know – I guarantee you he wouldn't have. You needed him to be good. You didn't need the baggage that came with him, which is why they got rid of him. But the whole – who knows how different FSU is today if Malik Henry actually panned out and turned into what he was going to be. I want to know how Marco Wilson played in the SEC championship. He's only a five-star because he's 6'5". There's a lot of guys his size who can't play, so stop being a hater. Uh, he's an Isaiah Simmons from Clemson type kid. Gonna be a monster. Boy, I tell you, these FSU folks, he's something. I mean, my y'all give us stuff to doubt, man. I don't, I don't really think about y'all to doubt y'all. I think the, the difference between me and you, Dennis, is you wake up saying, I can't wait to get on there and, and talk trash to Pope. And then the difference between me and you is I, I, I don't even think about Miami when I wake up. But thank you for being here, Dennis. I didn't go over the defensive stats. I'm going to do that next. I'm going to do that here in the next two seconds, Jenny. I'm just going over the comments. Let me finish these comments, and, yeah, I'm going to get into defense. I'm going to get into the defense. Um, I think Francois had potential, but he's definitely needed to be groomed. We beat NC – okay, I'm not going to read that one. Um, to be fair on that Winston, post-Winston era, literally everything went wrong. Francois, Johnson, they all had hard – yeah, absolutely. Um. Absolutely, Jurgen. Look at post Winston and look just look how the quarterback position played out. Malik Henry was a, a again, he had 
terrible issues off the field. Uh, DeAndre Johnson hits the, the, the girl in the bar. He's never heard from again. Uh, Francois probably, you know, forced to play when he shouldn't have played. It, everything went really downhill. Willie Taggart did Francois dirty by kicking him off the team over a lie. I think that was a – yeah, I, I think – I don't know what Willie was really doing there. Um, I'm going to leave my like and head out. All right, Mark Jean, thanks for tuning in. Um, I can't wait till Alabama puts up a thousand yards. And Leonard Taylor is an athletic Aaron Donald game record. Very early to say that, but I I I I know that Leonard Taylor is an undersized D tackle. Uh, that might be who you are foreseeing him to be. Um, I get you. I get you. Um, let's do it. Let's do defense. Let's get on these defensive numbers. If you thought the offense was bad, holy sh. Defense gave up 500, excuse me, we're not Miami, so we didn't give up 800 yards, but we did give up 456 yards per game, 257 yards in the air, 200 yards on the ground. Here, now, here's the thing with me when I start talking defense. Those are just, the, again, raw numbers. I think every FSU fan, if I asked – this is for my FSU fans. I got a question for you guys. Um, what's up, Kusami? And Miami fans, if you have knowledge of this, you can answer this as well. FSU fans, who is the most talented defensive player? If you had to pick a guy defensively, you say, that's the most talented guy on defense. Not Hampson Nazardine because he's going pro and didn't even play majority of this year. Who is the most talented guy on the defense? Who would it be? Polk, if you don't know the real Francois story and some other things going in the program, I'll let you know the real deal. Uh, info is coming from a player. Bet you can definitely fill me in on that. Um, but that my question is, who's the most talented defensive player on on team? That was the first thing I hit on Kusami was the cornerback. We already talked about him. We already talked about Nas leaving. We're reviewing the defense from the season right now. No squad says Demory Tate. What? Listen, I have all. I hope Demory Tate's great. I hope he's, in my opinion, well, it's hard to say, but his measurables, 6'2", 200 pounds, should be the next great FSU DB. But hold, we ain't seen Demory Tate. I can say he's the most talented player on the defense. It's kind of crazy. Phil says Gainer. Um, Brandon says Gainer. Jalen King says Gainer. Kusami, Gainer. I'm not talking about Asante because Asante left, but I feel you, Derek Neal. So let's not pick Asante Samuel. We're not picking Marvin Wilson. We're not picking guys that are no longer a team. Who's the best FSU player on the team right now? Uh, Jordan says Jarvis Brownlee. Okay. Um, Tyler says Jay or Gainer. Nobody says, okay, Samuels, Gainer. Okay, it's Gainer. I, I've said this before. I think Amari Gainer has the highest potential on this defense and he's probably the most talented guy. He's also the guy that for some reason played the most limited amount of snaps. Yet, in the, in the amount of snaps that Amari Gainer played, he led the team in tackles, second on the team in tackles for loss, forced fumbles, Fumble, he had 65 tackles, five tackles for loss, half a sack, one forced fumble, and one fumble recovery. Led your team in tackles. Led your team in tackles, Adam Fuller, yet you couldn't get him snaps. Do we got to continue? Do I, do I have to continue putting Adam Fuller on blast every time I get on here, or do we get the picture by now on this thing? When I was telling you guys earlier, and I'm not saying everybody, but y'all were in here watching. Y'all, you guys were in here watching the the, the 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 stream. I have people arguing with me up and down that these players just suck, and that Adam Fuller has no tools to work with. Amari Gaynor was your best defensive player, maybe outside of Asante Samuel this year, but you could only find him 20 percent of the snaps. Imagine if Amari Gaynor played more, 65 tackles in nine games. 
Come on, man. Adam Fuller, what are you doing? Adam Fuller does not know how to use Amari Gaynor. You can't be my defensive coordinator if you can't use a talent like this. This has been my argument against Adam Fuller the entire year. His scheme and the way he uses kids. The numbers say Amari Gaynor was the best player on your, te- on your defense. People know that Amari Gaynor is like the most talented kid on the defense. And yet we're sitting here wondering why Adam Fuller can't find snaps for him. That makes no damn sense. Emmett Rice is second on the team in tackles with 61. He actually led the team in tackles for loss with seven and a half. He had a sack and two pass defenses. Steven Dix, true freshman, third on the team with 44 total tackles, three tackles for loss. Asante Samuel led the defensive backfield with 30 tackles, three three INTs, six pass defenses, two forced fumbles, and one fumble recovery. Oh, no, excuse me, two fumble recoveries and one forced fumble. And J-Rob led the defensive line. J-Rob, actually, his stats kind of surprised me with the tackles for loss, but 25 tackles, seven tackles for loss, three sacks, one pass defense. J. Janarius Robbins is second on your team and, and, and tackles for loss. Yeah, Adam Fuller drops him in the flats at 6'5, 260, 70 pounds. I get given, I get that you sometimes you can throw a defense, excuse me, an offense off given different looks, but Adam Fuller does it more than he should be doing it. You see what I'm saying, man? You see what I'm saying? You look at these stats and you're saying these guys could be so much better if putting in the proper position to play. The numbers even support it. Fuller hasn't got a clue how many snaps the gainer get. I'd have to look that part up. I didn't look, but I did read something where it said Mari Gaynor was only in for like 20% of FSU's total defensive snaps. Something like that. I would have to look and see how many snaps Gainer actually played this year. I read something that said Amari Gainer only played 20 per- 20%. I really don't want to get on a rant right here, but that number is staggering. And even with 20%, he led your team in tackles. Again, 65 tackles, five tackles for loss, a sack, a forced fumble. I mean, Hell, if you get him up to 50% of the snaps, that production doubles in nine games. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. But the defensive scheme doesn't allow the kids the ball more chasing and out of place. Yep, absolutely. Watch Travis Hunter in the state semis. That is going to be special. Uh, I hope we can keep him. I'm not trying to be negative, but I just hope we can keep him, man. That dude is special. We already got him. The coaching staff has to put the players in the best position to make plays. That's what you get paid for. Absolutely. So J. Rob and Kendo are staying. I don't know. Neither one has made a decision yet. I have a feeling that Kendo will stay and that J. Rob will try to go pro, but I have no inside knowledge on that or anything. I that's just my assumption. Dick's put up solid numbers. I mean, for true freshmen to be second on your team in total tackles, I mean, excuse me, third on the team in total tackles. Um, they better be hopeful Gaynor don't go into the portal. Gaynor has already said he's coming back next year, so I'm not worried about that. Uh, Gaynor already put that stuff to rest. He said he's all in for next year, so not worried about that. That was actually one of the reasons. To me, Gaynor isn't a portal kid. Gaynor's the type, he's a Seminole, or he's just going to go pro. Um, I did speculate Gaynor going pro. I I, I said it. And uh, last show or the show before that, I said, if I was Amari Gaynor, and as much as I love Florida State, but if you can only find me 20% of the snaps and I'm putting up that kind of production, I'm going to go to the NFL. Um, maybe Gaynor had a 
talk with the staff and they they are determined to use him in the in a, in, a, in a more effective way. Um so yeah. But Gainer said he's coming back. Can Kendo and J-Rob please leave good kids, but enough um is enough. Uh I would like Kendo back. I would like I I take man, we need defensive end depth. I would take both of them back. The key is it's not that you have them too. Oh, excuse me, but sneeze. <clears throat> it's not that you have those two, it's that they play them at the same time. I've only been calling for ever to only play have one of those guys on the field at a time and at the other end position needs to be your speed rusher, whether it's gainer or whoever you want to bring off the edge. The problem is they play them both at the same time. They're doing the same exact things. Neither one of them are up the field twitchy defensive end pass rushers they're just there to set edges and you know that 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 is the problem it's not that you have both of them is that you use both of them in the same way at the same time mix it up poke some coaches like to have what they call their guys gainer not be his guy i hate when coaches do this and it's possibly why man the hell with that how is i don't care if he's my guy or not He's my most productive defensive player. <laughs> like, if look, I get it. It's, and it's really more so on offense, Panama, than it is on defense. Offensive coaches have that mentality of my guy, especially when it comes to the quarterback position and certain skill positions and the way they offensive-minded uh, coaches are, are very particular in the way they want to do things. They usually are the guys – or the coaches that say, I got to get my kind of guys in here. Defensively, if a guy is productive, he can play. What is Gaynor? How is he not one of your type of guys? Your most productive player on defense and you can't find a way to utilize him. No, it ain't about being my type of guy. Adam Fuller doesn't know what the hell he's doing. And until he shows me he knows what he's doing, I will continue to preach it to the high heavens. <clears throat> Yeah, no blood said it. No, he can't coach. <laughs> Travis Hunter reminds me of Gaynor in terms of being a Noel at heart. All this stuff has to do is find a way to keep him. Yeah, Gaynor is no blooded. Uh, absolutely. So who is leaving other than Asante, Marvin, and Hamsa? Uh, who? I mean, we know Tamari on Terry. <laughs> I'm guessing, you know, I guess in Jalen, you already know about Tamari on Terry, Corey Durden. I mean, there's a bunch of people. If you're talking about like who's declaring for the draft at this point, no one else has said anything. More guys have actually came out and said there's coming another year. Cam McDonald, Amari Gaynor, uh, those two came out and said they were staying. Uh, Robert Cooper said he was staying. So more guys have actually came out and said they were staying than they than than leaving. Fuller is so bad. He was finding ways to play Gainer less, but trying to play Warner more. Exactly. They're so bad. They move Warner to the spot I had said Gainer needs to be playing. And how much production did they get out of Leonard Warner? Whew. What you think about recruiting? Y'all got from Miami Northwestern. That's our neck of the woods. I like Patrick Payton. Very, very high upside. We really, really need to keep Negan, Kando, and J. Rob to leave. Gainer is the most talented on the defense today. Facts, Pope. Talent is talent, no matter if he don't fit the scheme. Why waste time doing mental gymnastics for Fuller when you when you can just look at the scoreboard and look at the stat sheet? Green Bay really does suck. What's up? I think Dent is rumored to transfer. Dent was. Um, so there are other guys that are on that, that. That transfer list has been out for a long time. I talked about that transfer list. Dent hasn't came out and said he's staying or going. Um, but Brandon Gant was also on that transfer list. And Brandon Gant were denied it when it dropped. Dent has been rumored. And there's some other guys. Um, until they put their name in the portal. At this point, I don't know what's stopping them from putting their name in the portal. Um, if I had to think about guys that I don't expect on the roster next year, I don't expect Warren Thompson back. Um, I'm all but positive he won't be back next year. Again, I read his stats, five catches on the year, and I'm almost 100%. Again, somebody can look it up for me. Warren Thompson probably had more drops than catches this year. 
Um, but we'll see. I don't think Warren Thompson will be back. I think I'm 50-50 on Dante Lucas. Dante Lucas was all but out the door at one point, if you guys don't know. He had completely erased everything FSU from his stuff. But now his profile picture on Twitter is back to being Florida State. A lot of people think that him and Coach Atkins and Norvell smoothed over whatever was the issue in their relationship. And people are expecting Dante Lucas to stay. I'm 50-50 on it. We'll see if he does end up staying. Um, but Dante Lucas was all but out. He had one foot out the door at one point. He was – he had every he had all his bags packed. He, from everything I, I, I was told, Dante Lucas was all but gone, and Alex Atkins was able to mend that relationship. So shout out to Atkins. Um, in my opinion, Gaynor can be another Brian Burns, but Fuller can't see it. In my opinion, Gaynor can just be another – Gain, in my opinion, honestly, Brandon, to hell with that co eh, comparison. When I look at how versatile Amari Gainer is, Amari Gainer can be the first Amari Gainer, in my opinion. Like, forget comparing him to whoever. The, but if you're not going to use him or you're going to use him in limited time, whatever, bro. <laughs> I think a Gainer could carve his own path, in my opinion. <laughs> For once and all, Dent ain't going nowhere. I know both of the Dent brothers. There you go. Brandon has said it. Dent ain't going nowhere. And I trust him. I trust Brandon. Akeem Dent. You know, Greg Greg Dent. Uh, think that, I think Greg Dent is their cousin. The brothers are Akeem Dent and isn't Adarius Dent who walked on. I think Greg Dent, who was a former FSU wide receiver, is the cousin of those two guys. So, you know, the Dents are um, – they're no-blooded, man. Dent, the Dents have always been no-blooded. If Dents leaves, it's because he's running from competition. So is that new DB good? Uh, I got to really look at his tape. Didn't look at his tape. From what I've read, good physical tackle, a good physical corner who's a good tackler. I mean, he was an SEC starter for two years. We'll see what we get. If anything, man, he, he brings competition and brings some veteran leadership to the DB room. I think Pope stays. I think I'm 50-50 on it, but it seems like Atkins really, really, really helped save that one. Um, with Peyton and Wilson coming in, I've thought about us switching to a 3-4. We might as well have played a 3-4 this year with the much as three-down lineman Fuller was playing with. See, the problem with 3-4 is – Do we have guy to play five tech? I don't know. Just defensive line, I don't know if we have the bodies to play a 3-4. I'm not against 3-4, man, if you have the bodies. I don't know if FSU has the type, the, the right type of guys to play the 3-4. Warren had five more catches than all of us. We could have caught up, but we wasn't in the game right. <laughs> Adam Fuller can't be that bad. He ain't give up almost 800 yards. Eh, you're right about that. He ain't give up 800 yards. Absolutely right about that, but hell, he's still bad. I hope we can keep Dent. I think he was fighting it. Yeah, he had a broken ankle at the beginning of the year. So I said that before. I said Dent, another thing, to me, Dent was put in a position to not be successful. Um, but It's not just playing corner, but the way they wanted him to play corner. You don't do things to these kids' strengths. And uh, coming off of that ankle injury, um, I don't know if he was a full full speed. <laughs> Robert Laster, what's up? He said, what's good, Paul? Let me ask you, if Milton wins the job, do you think we need to use Jordan Travis um, like Ohio State used Braxton Miller? And if we do have an eight-win season, how does it help? Work? First of all, if this team's able to win eight games, watch out. I, FSU has a lot of legacy targets next year in recruiting. Marvin Jones Jr., <sighs> I need him on campus. Um, that offensive tackle whose dad played, I forget his name off the top of my head, but I know you guys know who I'm talking about. The off the five-star number one offensive tackle in the entire country whose dad was an FSU player. He's got us in the mix. If we win eight games, I think we land all those guys. And then this thing gets turned around a lot quicker than people are giving us credit for. But you got to put a you got to put the product on the field that these kids want to play for. You have to. 
and and as far as your Jordan Travis um question goes, I I don't know how they're going to use him, but you have to. If Mackenzie Milton's your starter, which he probably will be and probably should be, you still have to find a way to – Jordan Travis is too electric and dynamic to just say, oh, we're just going to sit you on the bench for four quarters. you got to find a way to still get that guy in the, in the, in the, room, in, in the game. We need to pick a defensive scheme and stick with it. I agree, Tyler. <clears throat> I agree. Julie, that, yeah, that's what I'm talking about, man. We got FSU's in on a lot of good kids next year. They really are. I mean, imagine the class of Julian Armella, Marvin Jones Jr., um, the kid from Georgia, the five star from Georgia, who's probably that did, uh, what's his name again? Is it Travis Hunter? That dude might even be the number one just best football player in all of the country. Just imagine the class with those kids. If we win eight games, it's over. I, you know, I, if we win eight games, I, I think uh, I think people should be scared. Big if. Big if. But Mackenzie Milton gives us that chance. But we're not going to win eight games if this defense doesn't get fixed. If, this def if Adam Fuller doesn't. Pull his head out of his ass or figure something out or what something. Uh go, go to your local bookstore and find defense, find a book that says defense for dummies. And if Adam Fuller doesn't read that and figure out what he's doing, this team will not win eight games. Even if I think the offense will be vastly improved under McKenzie Milton. We're not gonna, we can't beat everybody 45 to 40 every game. You have to be able to make stops. Gainer is the type of player the Steelers pick, and he'd be damn near a Pro Bowl first year. I agree. The cornerback from Arkansas is really good. They have to find a way to get Jay Trev the ball. He's liable to score every time he touches the ball. Yes, he is. Seeing how Deion Sanders is recruiting, do you think we should have given him an opportunity? As head coach, no. I am going to stick to that. I It's nothing against Deion. Um, look, at – and at the HBCU at Jackson State, all Dion has to do is field the best and most talented team. He's going to win football games. The problem Dion would have, the problem that Dion would have ran into in the ACC in the Power Five period is, you're not the only talented team, man. I don't know how Dion X's and O's look. So until I see how Dion's X's and O's look. Would I have loved Dion on the staff as like a recruiting coordinator or something like that? Hell yeah! But as a head coach, no. And I'm gonna I'm I'm sticking firm on that. It doesn't mean that Dion won't be good a head coach in the future, and it don't mean that I'm you know that Dion doesn't come and make me eat those words. But off the bat, first head coaching job, Florida State University, nah, nah. <laughs> I just nah. I don't. Tyler, that's true. And pick a scheme where these kids are think aren't thinking but reacting and having fun. Travis Hunter is supposedly balling out this season. Looking up his stats, Travis Hunter is going to be used like Travis is going to be used like a Taysom Hill. We're not winning eight games playing ten yards off. The, uh, you know, I already said it. unless that defense gets fixed, we're not winning eight games. Uh, <laughs> who would you like as a DC? Uh, Sixty-one people in the chat, man. Hit the like button, folks. By all means, hit that like button. Again, we just recently hit over 700 subscribers, so hit the like button, guys. We are on our way to 1,000. The community is growing every time I do a video, and I'm loving it. If you're new, shout out in the chat if you're new. Make yourself known, and please hit the subscribe button. Oh, and by the way, share it. Florida State fans, college football fans in general, share the, share, share the videos. We're growing this entire community, believe me. Um. Who would you like as a DC? At this point, I would take a monkey. I would take a monkey and a man. Look, <laughs> at this point, I, I would almost give me any defensive coordinator with Power Five experience over what I've been over what I've seen this year. I, I'm just and if you want me to be specific and pick names, look, um, I'll take a Charlie Strong. I know he's not the most popular name. I'll take a Charlie Strong. I'll take a damn – hell, I'll take 
Bro, I'll take anything. <laughs> I'm just at the point where I will take anything. Dan Quinn, Charlie Strong, whatever, bro, whatever. With Fuller with winning eight games is impossible. Peter Shields in the building. What's going on? I know Dabo going to want y'all hit. Oh, yeah, Dabo going to try to put 100 on us next year. Absolutely. And, again, with Fuller, it doesn't – doesn't really seem like it's going to end well, does it? Uh, Panama Jack, it amazes me the way y'all complain about Fuller. I complain with Baker for the same exact thing. Too much thinking. Our Florida kids play off instinct. Sorry, guys. Got to go. Go, Nose. All right, Nose Squad, thanks for showing up. If we hire Dion, I take us as a joke. This isn't the place the coach to come in. I, that, that's my point. Uh, absolutely. Dion, this, look, I, I love me some prime. FSU could not. Dion can't have his first head coaching job at Florida State. It just doesn't – no, it just doesn't – you just don't do that. If you win eight games, we'd have a pick of who we want with the floodgates open. If we hired Dion, had the same results this year, you can imagine – exactly. And that's another reason why I didn't want Dion to come. I said, God forbid Dion Sanders gets hired. He's not successful early. They're going to turn on prime time. You do not want the fan base talking shit about prime time. Let Dion build his resume up. And if one day he's deserving of this head coaching job, I say we give it to him. But until then, by they standards now, so somebody got to knock him off. I can't stand that. But personally, me too, Pope. Bama already got Charlie Strong. Yeah, I know that, but he's not a defensive coordinator. He's an a. Uh, analysis or something like that. Um, I'm trying to figure out why our defensive line could not get a push on anybody. One of the great questions at the end of this season, at the beginning of the season, during the season, is what was going on with that defensive line and why didn't it live up to the, to the hype? Um, I would um, – if you guys don't know, I would advise you guys um, – and I talked about getting him on the show. We were in contact with each other. He kind of went dark on me. I know Freddie Stevenson has a lot of stuff. He's a busy man, so no hard feelings. I still want to get him on here one day. Um, but I was listening to Freddie Stevenson talk on a podcast. It's called the Listen Up Podcast, if you don't know that one. And he was saying that from talking to people inside the program, he didn't want to say any names, but I think I know who he was referring to. And this is going to answer your question about defensive line. He said, there were kids on the defense who knew what to do, knew the knew the how to play call, knew how to play it, and chose, literally chose, said, I don't, I'm I I don't vibe with this coach. I don't have faith in this coach. And decided that they on the field were, were going to freelance. We're going to just play and do what they wanted to do. I think he was. Again, he didn't say names, so I'm not going to put it on him. I'm going to put it on myself. I think he was refer referring to some of the guys like Corey Durden and a few others. That Corey Durden, Corey Durden was very vocal about playing for multiple – didn't come, he didn't come to Florida State to play for all these different head coaches or different coaches. I, I think Corey Durden was one of the guys, and you saw it on the field, where he was always out of the play. He was always constantly playing himself out of plays. I think Corey Durden was one of those guys. And I think getting some of those guys out of here, man, is going to help Adam Fuller. Now, there's still his personnel use that I have a problem with. But a defensive coordinator can't be successful if, I don't know, maybe your second best defensive tackle is just saying to hell with the game plan. I'm just going to do what I want to do. And that's not coming from me again. That's coming from a guy on Freddie Stevenson who knows people in that program. Uh, he, he said it. I heard him say it on the Listen Up podcast. So check that podcast out um, if you guys want to. Um, I mean, how could you blame guys if D.C. is your head coach, is a D.C. mind, and your head coach literally is the one that has the game plan to the game? I want Pruitt back in Tennessee fire. So Pruitt's never coming back, but I would definitely take it. Um. I want Lovey Smith as a DC with Tony Dungy as the team chaplain. <laughs> okay. 
I would love for Miami to get Lovey. <clears throat> Two top 10 interior linemen and one of the worst FSU defenses ever. That's real talk about prime. Remember when TJ Rushing was the DB's coach? I wonder how A&M's DB did. That's a good point. I wonder how his DB's graded out this year. Good point. Um, full sabotage the line and transfer to NC State. Yeah, man, Kusami. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's not just him, not all on Durden. And look, that's me coming up with that. I'm I'm saying Durden. Freddie, again, Freddie didn't say any name specifically. But he said kids coming from kids in that program that he talked to were telling him there are kids on that defense that know the scheme, know the game plan, know what they're supposed to do, and were literally on field. Essentially what he was saying, he didn't say this out of his mouth. He was just saying that they were freelance and doing what they want to do. But essentially what he's saying is that they were sabotaging the team. If you're going to go out there and do what you want to do and not follow the game plan, you're essentially sabotaging the defense. The defense was not on one accord. If the kids knew this, I don't know how the defensive coaches didn't peep this and why they kept allowing it and allowing this guy to play or these guys to play, whoever these kids were. You get what I'm saying? There's, there's a lot going on there, a lot going on in that locker room. There's a reason why Norvell clean house, and I said it on the last episode. If there's one thing I give Norvell 100% credit for, and one of the reasons why, you know, is th three and nine or three and six. What are we, three and six this year? Three and six is never acceptable at this university, ever. But you know what? I'll calm down a little bit when I realize you had to clean house. You had to. There's a reason why FSU has had what? I did a, I did a count the other day myself. I honestly think they are close to like 20 transfers just out they almost up to like 20 people have left this program since Norvell's got here. The AJ Lightons, the Kalen LeBourne's, Anthony Grant's. I can do a list. We can go over a list if I wanted to. I don't feel like doing it right now. But there's literally like 20 players is out of this program. Norvell has literally said, I'm not winning with these kids. It's time to take my lumps with my own guys, and we're going to go from there, and we're going to build something, and I'm 100% for it, and I'm with it. I can respect that. I can't respect you putting the same stuff out on the field and getting worse or no results. I can respect saying, you know what? You guys ain't, you guys are sabotaging me from the inside. And if I'm going to get fired, I'm going to get fired on my own merits. I'm not going to let kids that don't want to be here sabotage me. And I'm a hundred percent with it. And that's essentially what Freddie Stevenson was alluding to when I, it, it was today when I listened to the podcast, it's called listen up podcast. I you guys should go check it out if you haven't checked that one out before. Um, I need to get back to playing that, Jalen. <laughs> I stopped playing it for a little bit. I need to get back to playing it. Um, Pope, that's true about certain players doing their own thing. I was told the same thing by the players I know personally. And then there you go. And Brandon B's another one. He said he knows both of the dents personally. And I'm sure if he knows the, uh, the dents, I'm pretty sure he knows a few other players there. There are kids in that locker room just doing what they want to do on the field. That's another one, man. I hope we destroy NC State, Boston College next year. It's personal now. Yeah, Jalen Zouard Woodbay said it was personal. And it can be personal all at once. Yeah, we're, we're going to run over that. Um, I'll keep y'all updated on the score. Polk, I'll have to find a way to inbox you some of the stuff. I know how the culture went to the dumpster. Brandon, we got a link on Facebook or something. I don't know if you have a Facebook or uh, you can email me. My email is in the description of this video. So yeah, if you want to email me or whatever, any, hey, hit me up. There's ways to contact me for sure. Hell, I think my Facebook's linked in the description as well. My Instagram's linked in the description. My Twitter feed. I don't know if you have a Twitter or not. But yeah, my Facebook's in the description, Twitter, Instagram. Um, definitely reach me. Def I Actually, my email's not. I think I took my email down because I was getting a bunch of junk email. Um, but, yeah, man, definitely, definitely inbox me some stuff. Shout out to new subscriber Michael Henson. You're not wrong, Dennis. When you clean house, you're not wrong. That, I, that There's a reason we only won three games. When you clean house, yes, it is a setback. But uh, the entire fan base was calling for a youth movement. Well, guess what happens with the youth movement, guys? You take your lumps. 
I told I, I told you guys that when everybody was clamoring for the youth movement, I said, okay, I'm with the youth movement too. But are we going to have the patience for the youth movement? Some some people claim they want a youth movement, but don't have the patience for it. But guess what? Norvell had to clean house. Brandon B. just alluded to it. And I told you what a guy like Freddie Stevenson, another person with inside sources, said about this program. Kids were sabotaging it from the inside. Sucks. It sucks that a Florida State Seminole would go that route. But kids were doing their own thing on the football field, on Saturdays, instead of following what they had been taught. Freddie Stevenson said kids were saying they've been taught the right way. They are know the right way. They just didn't want to do it. Like, come on. There's a reason why 20-some-odd 20, 20 players have transferred out this program. Norvell's, you know, Norvell had to clean house. It just is what it is. No, McKenzie threw one interception and Jordan threw two of them. Jalen, what you talking about? I'm behind Norvell Cleaning House. I honestly think we jump to eight wins next season. We have the potential to have a top 20 recruiting class at the end of this class. I, I agree on the top 20 class. Depending on who you add in the portal, eight wins is possible. I, eight wins is hard for me, Kusami, until us defense just – but like I just alluded to, with the guys that's out of here, maybe Adam Fuller now can get his – I hope Adam Fuller honestly proves me wrong. I really do. I'll definitely hit you up on Facebook. Bet. I know tomorrow Terry was because that's my dad's friend. He was telling me how he'd be smoking, drinking, and clubbing. <laughs> Getting Milton to me is huge. Travis is a great athlete, but the kid couldn't throw the ball. Milton is going to just improve the entire offense. And it, and even just from the fact that um, Milton is just going to show these guys how to be winners, in my opinion. What did up, Joseph Hardaway? About what chance would you give Milton being the best QB? And I think, I think eighty. I think Mil, I think Mackenzie Milton at eighty percent probably starts the season off as the number one quarterback in the ACC. Now that kid in Clemson's going to have a lot to say about that. I think that kid in Clemson's very talented, and De'Ari King is going to have a little bit to say about that, but not much. I think Mackenzie Milton. I mean, if he's not the best, he's going to be top three quarterback in the ACC. Uh, poke. What does Alho money mean? You mean Alo? Alo is just my, you know, like J Lo, Jennifer Lopez. I'm Alo. So I call myself Alo money. <laughs> That's what all that is. Appreciate the shout out. Absolutely. I appreciate the subscription, man. Appreciate the subscription. That podcast is called the Listen Up Podcast. Um, imagine our potential if we played every game like we did at UNC. Milton is definitely better than King. King will lose his job. People kind of – do you all really think King will lose his job to Garcia? That's going to be interesting, I guess. Did you see the Canelo fight? I saw the Canelo uh, sparring session. <laughs> I saw Canelo beat Buddy like uh, – like he stole something, wasn't it, the outcome wasn't surprising to me. But Canelo beat the hell out of Callum Smith, didn't he? But yeah, I watched it. If Mil what if Milton comes? If Milton comes back a hundred, then I think you have a legit Heisman contender. If Milton comes back one hundred percent, meaning he can run the way he used to run, everybody know he throws a beautiful football. Let's let's assume, and I think it, I don't even think it's an assumption. I think you can all but bet. The offensive line continues to progress. I mean, you saw year one with Atkins. Year two with Atkins should be, you know, I'm not saying, again, let's take it in strides. I'm not going to say the offensive line is going to be the best in the nation uh, next year. But if you saw what it was this year, pfft, I don't know. What do we want to say? What do we want to say about the offensive line? What what was its grade this year? Uh, I'll give it a solid C just to be fair. Solid C, which is a huge upgrade from the D's and the F's FSU's had the last four years. That C offensive line, a B. Uh, Mackenzie Milton gets a B-rated offensive line. If I can get Destin Hill in there, uh, uh, some veteran, uh, another veteran transfer. I mean, come on, he has a chance to be a Heisman contender if he's a hundred percent. I honestly believe that, and I'm not. I don't. I'm not blowing smoke when I say that. I think he has a chance to be a 
Heisman legit contender at 100% healthy. No, he won't lose it to Garcia. I don't think so. I don't think he'll lose it to Garcia either. Um, not not make his excuses, but they probably felt their college career was wasted at FSU by decisions out of their own control. What do you buy in? I get you, bro. And maybe they're right. None of that stuff was in their control. It's not their fault that Jimbo quit. It's not their fault that Taggart was a bust. You know, it's not their fault that Adam Fuller sucks and the jury's still out on Mike Novell. I understand it. But why can't you just come in, do your job to the best of your abilities, and go home? Why have to just blatantly go against the grain? You know what I'm saying? That's just hard-headedness. That's just rebellious stuff. Why, why, why do that? Why not just be your own? Why, why not just be be a team player? You know? That was a sparring session for real, for real. Bro, that was a beat down. And Callum, Callum Smith just fought exactly how Canelo wanted and needed him to fight. I, I, I'm telling you, the best 168-pounder to me is Caleb Plant. Caleb Plant, he moves, he's slick. He knows how to, he knows how to hit and not be hit. I think that is be a tremendous fight. Caleb Plant and Canelo. Canelo struggles with those type of shifty fighters. I would love to see it. Don't get me wrong. I think Canelo's the pound for pound best in the world. I've been saying that. But Callum Smith, man, that was a – I know he was a champion. You don't want to call a champion a bum. And I'm not saying Kyle Smith was a bum, but that was a, come on, that was a cakewalk. I, and Canelo's that good. But I think there's some other guys that are that good too. And I think Caleb Plant can do some things with him. I thought King was going to leave for the draft. I thought he he is eligible. He's just not a he's just not a draftable prospect at 5'9 and no real accuracy. He has a decent enough arm. A uh, uh, boy couldn't hit the side of, you know, the Empire State Building if he wanted to. That's the problem with De'Eric King. I hope to God a lot of these kids that left are kick, kick rocks and get a chance to poison the younger kids. Hey, you know what? The younger kids are the younger kids. They'll be fine. I'm not worried about the younger kids. I'm not. Because I, I, I watch the younger kids play hard. I watch Stephen Dix play hard. He wasn't poisoned. Um, I watched Derek McClendon improved drastically at defensive end. I don't think he was poisoned. You know, I, I I think they're fine. I think they're fine. We need someone like Milton to make the defense respect our offense. Garcia has an arm, man. Uh, played a game for my alma mater, Tate Rotomaker School, and looked better in one game than Tate ever did in two years as a starter. The kid is the truth. Glad we got a QB like Milton. Just got to make sure we get him some weapons and playmakers. Any offensive line stats? I'd have to go into individual stats and see how guys graded out. Um, I didn't look up like any pancake blocks or anything like that, Tyler. Uh, make the defense respect the pass. What chance do you think Rod Orr starts as a true freshman? That's a big kid. He's six seven. Yeah. He's a big kid. He's a long, big kid. I still think it's a project guy, but you know what? And while I, I'll stick to that assumption, I didn't think Robert Scott was going to play year one. I didn't think Robert Scott was going to play year one, let alone be the best, you know, not obviously Devontae Love Taylor is the best offensive lineman on the team, but let alone be a kid that not only was playable, but I said it before. Does anybody remember – a Robert Scott penalty for false start, for holding. Does anybody remember Robert Scott giving up multiple sacks in a game? Babyon Johnson was guaranteed for at least one start every single football game. What about Robert Scott, true freshman? Robert Scott went about his business this year quiet as hell and was effective, didn't give up sacks, effective run blocker. I did not expect that. Who knows? Maybe they don't take a transfer portal tackle, and maybe Atkins is able to turn Rod Orr into a legit starter earlier than I think. I think Rod Orr is more of a project because I think um, his body just has so much room to develop before he's – like the kid's 6'7", 296 right now, doesn't have a lot of baby fat on him, but even then you can still trim some of that fat on him. Imagine him with muscle. I think Rod Orr's playing weight is going to be like 320. 
Um, same thing with Robert Scott. Robert Scott, when you watch him, look at his body. It's not developed, and he's still playing that effective. Robert Scott can put on about another 10, 15 pounds himself and really chisel himself up. Offensive line and Alex, and I keep saying it, man, Alex Atkins deserves as much money as he wants. As long as we have him, we're fine. We cannot lose that guy. Unless it, if it's a head coaching job, I get it. But there's no way you can allow him to take a lateral job. There's no way you can allow him to take a lateral job. You keep Alex Atkins here until forever. Like you said, Milton is going to teach these guys in the QB room how to lead, how to be winners, something very lacking the whole time. Absolutely. Baker Mayfield, willing and dealing. Polk, you got to think also this offense – oops, chat skipped on me. Uh, this offensive line was trash year before, and Atkins had a half a spring. Not even that, and look how improved. You're absolutely right. Absolutely right. Jalen says, Garnet 7, goal 3. Main Dade says, I agree. Young guys play hard for on this team and are very productive. I don't know who you like in the NBA. I'm a Knicks fan. And I'm not going to keep telling you guys I'm a Knicks fan. Because every time I tell y'all this, y'all laugh at me. But I'm a Knicks fan. Don't make me say it again, Canes. Uh, but I'm the Miami Heat gatekeeper, so you're welcome to Heat Nation. That means we really don't like each other. Not only FSU and Miami rivals, now with Miami and Nick the rivals. Oh man. How are we gonna how were we on special teams? I think again, I didn't look up stats on special teams, but just from our me remembering, I thought we were I thought we had some of our best punting, I think we've seen in a long time with Monster Mono. Um I think I thought kickoff coverage was average, punt coverage was average. We got to find a we got to find a place kicker. We got to find a guy who can kick field goals. That we struggled mightily on that. Now our, our our pump blocks and our field goal blocks were above average for sure. How many of those did we have? Um, but uh, we got to fix that place kicking, man. How many kids do you think was doing the sabotaging? I, I you know, was it everybody? Of course not. But look. When you talk about the defense and the defense being – think about it like this on the offensive line. And this is very similar on defense, but let's just do a small unit like the offensive line. If one offensive lineman doesn't do their job, the whole thing crumbles. The whole thing all, – all it takes is one defensive player to penetrate and your quarterback sacked, right? Same thing on defense. If, if one guy just wasn't doing or filling his correct gap, that opens up the lane for the running back to run for – 30, 40, 50 yards down the field. So it didn't have to be five guys on defense doing it. It could have literally been one or two guys, and you still were going to get catastrophic plays because when you scheme a defense, it's you're scheming it around everybody being in the correct positions. All it takes is one guy. They say football's a game of inches for a reason. All it takes is one guy being out of place, being a fraction late, and a hole's open that wouldn't have been there otherwise. <clears throat> special teams in the nation, best special teams in the nation, in Jalen's opinion, or carries his weight well. He does. That's what I'm saying. He doesn't look, he's not like sometimes you get these kids and they're big and sloppy and you got to kind of revamp their body. Doesn't look overweight to me. Polk, did you see the transfer corner from Arkansas? Yep, we talked about him in the beginning of the show. I think he adds some good toughness and leadership to the DB room. I'm interested in the Garden and Gold game this yeah, I think I don't. I don't think there's no reason why there shouldn't be a spring next year. You had these kids play a whole 10, 11, 12 games in COVID. They can have a spring in COVID, so they, there should be a spring game next year. Better O line play equals better offense. As long as we have Woodson, I think we're gonna hold on to Hunter. I keep hearing that. I keep hearing that as long as we have Woodson, him and Hunter have this amazing relationship, and Hunter's not going nowhere. I keep hearing that. I hope that is the case. But the better that kid continues to play, if, 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 if Bama and Clemson and Georgia ain't trying to recruit him heavy already, which I know they are, it's only going to keep continuing to heat up from here. I'm talking about bag droppers because I think legit that kid might be the best foot, college football player in the country. We need dynamic return guy. I miss Greg Reed. Let's go heat. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> I knew it. Every time I say I'm a, 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 a Knicks fan, here we go. 
Pope, not sure if you heard the latest rumor report. Is Harden to the Heat or next trade is supposed to – really? Harden to the Heat? That would be legit. But who would the Heat have to give up, though? I got to think the Heat would have to give up, like, Tyler Hero, probably uh Jimmy Butler and some other – like, I don't know. I mean, I got to see who they would have to give up to get him. The Nets thing would be insane. If the Nets are able to trade everything and still have KD, Kyrie, and James, and James Harden, just give them the championship now. Yes, got to find a place kicker and a true punt return. That too, I didn't even talk about that, but we do need a guy at punt return and kick return who are le like legit guys back there i don't think we had that either good point joseph hardaway not buying none of the preseason hype anymore i want to become a recruiter for fsu for free i want i want to get some o-line from the midwest them boys seem to be head hunters oh man it's cool like ob topping though kid can ball if you watch me on the draft i was not happy with the ob topping pick not because i don't think the kid's good i just think the knicks need a point guard um, don't didn't check in on in with you, Alo. But how you felt about closing on your signing day? I thought, all things considered, you added a, a four star pass rusher out of Virginia, and you were able to flip back Malik McLean. All in all, it's a successful closing day for four state. You moved back in the top twenty five and recruiting. Can't be mad at it. Best college football player. Wow, that's a bold take. No, I'm, uh, I was talking about, I think you misheard me, or maybe I misspoke. I think Travis Hunter's the best high school football player, not the best college football player. Let me, let me, uh, maybe I, maybe I said college on accident. I think Travis Hunter is the best high school football player in the country. Uh, no, neither one of those teams. Neither one of those teams. What do you think about the receiver transfer from Kansas? Heard we're leading to get him. Can't remember his name. I got to go watch him. I did see him. As a matter of fact, I just had him up. Let me see. He might, might still be up, and I can bring him up real quick. Um, yeah, Andrew Parchment, 6'2", uh, out of Fort Lauderdale. I got to follow him. I mean, his stats are nothing to be desired. Okay, so he uh, – Okay, in 2019, he had 65 receptions, 829 yards, uh, 12 yards per catch, seven touchdowns, and a long of 75. Uh, this last year, I'm guessing he opted out because he only had 24 catches and 197 yards. So, um, hey, I'm with it. If he's good, man, um, um, bring him on. I got. I want to watch him, like watch a full season of him to see what's his game. I don't. I don't know if he's a speed guy. If he, you know. Uh, Got to see what his game is. Couldn't could Travis Hunter be the next Derwin? I think Travis Hunter isn't the physical. Well, I don't even want to say that. I mean, Derwin's a physical freak. Hunter very, very well. I think Travis Hunter though. I mean, he shows the ability to play offense. He may be a better ball hawk than Derwin. I don't know, man. It's gonna be crazy to see. I really got to dive into Hunter's tape and just see exactly what I'm seeing here. And I really haven't, because he's a next-year recruit, haven't really done that. Um, Polk, how in the hell did you become a Knicks fan? I've said this a million times. I'm not going to keep saying it. <laughs> My dad was a Knicks fan. My parents are originally from New York. Um, there you go. That's how. I don't think Harden, Kyrie, and Katie would work. Only one of them could play off ball. I mean – we know KD can play off ball. I agree with you that Harden and Kyrie both need the ball in their hand. Um, but with that said, Kyrie played off ball with LeBron. So I, I think it could work. I think it could work. You always, you can never have enough Florida guys. Can Andrew catch the ball? Seems like we lead the NCAA and drop right. Can dude just catch? If he can catch, bring him on in. Bring him on in if he can catch. Am I the only one that looks at Clemson in the playoffs and the ACC championship games and gets so pissed at whoever ruined our reign? <laughs> right. You, I, there's plenty of times I look at Clemson and say, oh, that should be us. Please go to the Nets. Can't give up Tyler Hero. We would 
be set back for years. Harden is not Heat culture. I not a Heat fan, but I kind of agree with you, man. I I don't know if Harden really fits the type of culture and identity the Heat have built there. Jimmy fits it perfectly. Um, check out the offensive stats for Travis Hunter last game, thirteen, and that's why the Derwin comparison. I just don't because that he's all, Travis Hunter could probably legit play, be be the best wide receiver, let alone best cornerback. I got to watch him and see what it seems like he affects the game more just as much on the offense as he does on the defense. Like tough. The kid's tough. Again, best high school player in the country, in my, in my opinion. Um, gold 19 garnet seven sniper says best believe if y'all get hardened. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. If, if you're getting hardened in Miami, you got to be giving up like Tyler hero and probably some more stuff. Um, I think the Heat's priorities would probably be to keep Jimmy and Bam, but you might have to give up Gorn, Drogic, Tyler Hero, and, and a couple, a few picks probably, if I had to guess. He played off ball, then proceeded to request the trade. You're right. He played off ball because he wanted the ball in his hands uh, when he was playing with LeBron, and yeah, he requested the trade. Absolutely right, Sniper. Um, I feel you. The only problem is if Harden goes to the Nets, it's pretty much over especially with the staff. I don't know how Nash coaches, so we'll wait to see that. But with talent alone, it's over. Harden, Kyrie, and KD, they'll figure it out, bro. They'll, they, you, they'll figure that out. You think Hunter plays more offense for us than defense? Ah, I think you got to figure out where he fits. Obviously, he fits anywhere. But you got to figure out, like, where where, where where do we make – where does he become more effective at? Um, I don't know. I don't know. A part of me is looking at those offensive numbers and saying, yeah, throw his ass at receiver, you know? Throw him at receiver. But uh, that'd be, uh, that's a great that, – that's going to be an awesome problem to have. I just hope we have that problem come come this time next year. I hope we're talking about him signing early and, and we, we now have that problem of where the hell do we play this amazing talent. Paul, when's the last time a Nick fan was happy with anything they've done? Shut up. Shut your mouth. Harden going to be eating down there, eating good soul food with Trick Daddy. <laughs> What's the news with wide receiver transfer from Dartmouth? He picked Baylor. He picked, right? I, I, I know he picked the school, and I'm almost positive it's Baylor. He picked Baylor. Uh, Katie, Texas produced some good product out of Texas. Hunter Washington should be a legit corner. I've heard he's pretty, I heard he's pretty good in high school. But I like I like Hunter Washington's tape, so I, I think we got a good one there. Fifty to thirty-eight. Who's the QB for Garnet? They ask you, Jalen J. Trav. Nash has a solid coaching staff; he'll be fine. And we know PGs make some good head coaches. We'll see. We'll see. We turned the number three or four safety of all time out of high school into a running back. Carlos was more effective as a running back, though. Um. Carlos had problems in coverage as a safety man. Carlos was way more effective with the ball in his hands. That was, to me, one of the best changes Jimbo made, in my opinion, was moving Carlos Williams to running back. He was way more effective than – you look at what we had at safety already with Terrence Brooks and LaMarcus Joyner and even Ramsey playing safety and stuff like that. Uh, they, it, they, he, just, he just fit better. I think in the offensive side of the ball. I mean, Carlos Williams was legit 6'2, 230, and could run 4'4. Four, four. He Carlos Williams was, was another incredible athlete. Another incredible athlete. <clears throat> Dark mouth. Yeah, he went to Baylor. What up, Chad? How you doing? Tough loss for them Gators yesterday. I'm not saying I, I'm damn sure not mad at it, but I thought you guys played a solid game. He played a better game than I thought you guys played. Congrats on the b-ball win. We lost, man. Oh, but oh yeah, we did whoop y'all ass. <laughs> I mean, and, and shout out to that kid. Um, so glad to hear he recovered and he did a little video and he's recovered. That's awesome. But we still whooped that ass. Um, glad to see he's recovering. Crazy game last night. Thought Trash was going to Willem to a win. Yeah, and FSU basketball did lose too. They did lose. Um. But Florida played a better game than I thought they were going to play. I agree. Put Hunter at wide receiver. Kid has 20 TDs and 112 yards per game. I just 
it's going to be interesting to see where they see that guy fitting out. At the same time, an elite athlete, athlete like that, could he can compl- completely change the dynamic of a defense too. Like you can legit not be able to throw to his side of the ball or his side of the field, which opens up everything else. I mean, his first carry was a 67-yard touchdown, right? Something like that. <laughs> it was something like that. At a big-time Georgia school, Jordan Travis stats. Three interceptions? Damn. Polk, quick question. How Cyberpunk 2077 been for you? I haven't had too many crashes. I'm playing it. I don't know what you're playing it on. I'm playing it on a PS4 Pro. I get crashes. The crashes haven't really been the problem. Honestly, it's the it's how unstable. Like things don't even render in. Like at times, the game legit looks like a PS2 game, and it makes me not want to play it. So until they fix it, I haven't really been playing it that much. I know they were giving refunds, and I'm going to keep the game because I like the story. I think the story, what I've played has been fun, but they got to fix the game before I can continue to play it. There's times, again, this game looks like a PS2 game sometimes. Very disappointing with the cyberpunk stuff. I do play video games, guys. I am a gamer in some aspects as well. Uh, Chad, any word on Marco Wilson? Xavier Rhodes from wide receiver to DB is the best switch. I think Xavier Rhodes' skill set definitely had fit more to the DB side, but that was another guy. Xavier Rhodes, but Xavier Rhodes wasn't as highly touted as this kid. Xavier Rhodes was only a three-star wide receiver. Um, this kid is all all world. Carlos made a game saving interception against Georgia Tech. He did. I do remember that play. I still say he. I still say Jimbo made the right move with him, and that he was way more effective on the offensive side with the ball in his hands. Uh, what kind? What kind of word? No squad. Harden going to the Nets don't mean nothing because nobody would play defense. KD plays defense, bro. Now I don't know. It remains as BC how be seen how KD plays off of the Achilles. Y'all y'all be sleeping on KD's defense. KD plays defense. Uh, the the, the Le- LeBron and Anthony Davis ain't beating that team. LeBron's gonna have would have his hands full with KD alone. We've seen what KD does to LeBron in the playoffs, especially under that Golden State. Harden, KD, and Kyrie is better than Steph Clay and KD. I think. I think. Maybe I'm wrong on that, but I think. It's a damn fly. LeBron ain't beating that team. LeBron wouldn't beat that team. LeBron would have his hand full with KD alone. All right, Brandon, I, I'm, I'll, I'll check that after we get off here. Carlos also won our game in OT versus Clemson. Talk about the year Sean McGuire. Um... Are you talking about the year that Sean McGuire? Yeah, he ran for the winning touchdown. Yeah, you're talking about the year Sean McGuire got the start. Um, did you see the play where Florida got the pick, ran about 20? Oh, man. Did you see the video Ha Ha Davis put out about that? Shit was. <laughs> ha Ha Davis put out a video on that. That joke was crazy. Mackenzie Milton had stats. Uh, why, why are you guys throwing all these interceptions, Jalen? Y'all leave the Knicks fans alone. They suffered enough. Stop. I'm not talking. We're not talking basketball. Yeah, everyone said Bama was going to curb stomp UF. Was the case. But no moral victories here, though. Maybe next year. LeBron going to 3P. I don't. He will retire. I think he will play one season with his son. I I, I think so, too. I think, I think LeBron's waiting for Bronny to get to the league. So that could be the first thing ever in NBA history, which would be Actually, very cool to see. Yeah, a tough night. Damn, 20 TT, 20 TDs. Who was that? Gotta look them up. 
who knows, man, Marco, okay, you guys talking about Alabama. I don't care about Alabama. Believe it or not, Warren Thompson finally had a good game. On the video game, he had a bunch of good games for me. Harden plays defense, good in the post, can't, just can't guard guards. Nobody really can guard guards. Imagine trying to guard Kyrie, Curry, etc. Doesn't matter if they don't win chips. We will be out. We will be out of contention. Period. If we allow this trade, um, and what will we be playing for? A second, third best seed. Can't let fandom got Tyler blind. You two facts. I think LeBron would beat that team. I don't. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't think LeBron would be. I mean, LeBron, the a Jimmy Butler led Heat team took LeBron to, to six games. I don't think LeBron would beat that team. I really don't. I think people forgot that how good Kevin Durant is. I think Golden State was a better team all around compared to the Nets if Harden goes there. You would still have to see how they would fill out the rest of the roster. But I don't know, man. I don't know. Chad, I could understand that, but throwing the show is excusable. What are your plans for the channel in the offseason? Uh, baseball's not really my deal. Baseball's a fun game to play. I can't watch it, man. <laughs> I can't watch it. Um, and I have thought I have thought about what I'm gonna do in the offseason. Um, and what I may do in the offseason is, is do more focus on a little bit other things and while you know, while still touching up on our FSU stuff. Um but in the offseason, we may do more of the other content, the boxing videos, which people seem to be enjoying those. And uh, definitely going to still talk about some basketball. Um, spring will still give me plenty of things to talk about. I think the transfer portal is going to be a year-round thing. So that will still give me, I think, plenty of things to talk about. Um, and there's going to be plenty of stuff to talk about, even in the offseason, I believe. If you're on FSU Twitter, they're going to give me things to talk about. Believe me. I'm not too worried about that. Cleveland Browns a solid team this year. Yep. I still don't think Baker Mayfield's anything to write home about. Uh, but the talent around him has made that team a solid team. Um, LeBron is no way, shape, or form beating Kate. I don't think so either, man. I don't think so either. I thought about doing that, too, in the offseason, getting back on the NCAA 14 uh, game play that I was doing before. Uh, Panama Jack, who do you think is the best win, Colts or Giants? So that pretty much – we kind of – we didn't – I didn't really get into the huge um, Tampa Bay Lightning putt talk, poke. No. <laughs> Even though I can wa – I'd rather watch a hockey game than a baseball game. Rather watch a hockey game than a baseball game. At least it's exciting. Baseball really just puts me to sleep. Um, if you ever hit the like button, man, definitely hit the like button. Um, and if we're still talking, we're still talking defense. We're still talking just the the the. the we kind of got off topic. My whole plan was to really go in and talk about just the overall season review, and. Uh, you know, I, I went over the stats, but I didn't really get into how each individual position graded out and um, what I didn't like and, and what I do like. And I think because I'm already going on three hours, I think I will definitely save that for another show where we'll grade. We're going to grade the, the, the positions. We're going to talk about the future of each position, uh, what we see going forward. Um, and all that good stuff um, because I'm already three hours strong and I'm about to go eat. Plus, that gives me another video to do. Uh, but we definitely went over the, the stats. Again, you guys see how much production Amari Gaynor had in limited time. Goes to, goes back to my whole Fuller needs to be get the hell out of Tallahassee deal. Um, we got us a grand transfer corner today. Hamster's going pro. But all in all, the, the positive news for FSU, I think, continues to, to, to come about. I think they are trending in the right direction in terms of the offseason. We'll see how the the on the field production, uh, but we you know, we got a while before that. But I think I still think the offseason seems to have a good feel to it to me. I feel like we closed pretty good on closing day. I uh, picked up a grad transfer today. 
picked up our potential quarterback. I won't say of the future because he's only a one-year rental, but we still got a big-time quarterback for next year. We got some positive momentum. Let's hope we close that strong with the likes of a Hargrove, a Destin Hill, a Taiwan Malone, and maybe some other guys. And, of course, to keep uh, hitting that portal up. Um, yeah, I thought we had a solid show tonight. Solid show. Kind of got off topic, but that's always okay. We can talk about whatever around here. I love talking basketball, football, all of that good stuff. So getting off topic is never a problem. All that does is mean I get to talk more on the next video as long as you guys are willing to listen. But thanks, everybody, who came in here tonight. Again, the next video, which will probably be Tuesday. Tuesday, you know what we do on Tuesday. We do the hangover on Tuesday. And uh, Tuesday, yeah, I think we're going to go over more so each individual position from this year and just review the position group as a whole, the individual players, as uh, how they play, uh, potential, bust, who we don't like, who we want to continue to see grow and progress. We're going to do all that this upcoming Tuesday. So shout out everybody who was in the chat tonight. Again, if you didn't hit the like button on your way in, by all means, hit that thing on your way out. And thanks everybody who showed up, showed support. We had one new subscriber. Let me let me check. I know I had one new subscriber this stream. We called him out already. That was uh, Michael Henson. I got another one. And uh, Green Bay really does suck. Thank you, brand new subscriber. And then the Black 9 Millimeter. Thank you for your subscription. Three new subscribers tonight. That brings us up to 708 subscribers. Again, we are on the road to 1,000 subscribers. Thanks, everybody, for the support, like always. We are going to get there eventually, I promise you, and that we will continue to grow this. It's not just college football community, sports community. Again, you come over here, I, you get a lot of – everybody tell you, bro, you get a lot of different stuff with me. Basketball, football, boxing. I like all of it. I talk about all of it. This isn't just college football. This isn't just Florida State. First and foremost, it is. I want you to be clear about that. This is FSU first and foremost. So when you come over here, you're going to see that helmet every time. You're going to see that guy on the wall, the GOAT, P-Dub, every time. You're going to see that flag behind me every day. And I'm going to have on some kind of hat almost every time. But we can also talk about other things, whether it's NBA, NFL, boxing whatever but hey stay classy seminoles and everybody else that's not seminole fans y'all stay uh stay coming in here showing your love and support but stay classy seminoles and uh we at you and yes chad you definitely show up every time and i appreciate it but we are out here guys have a great night